I've got a green text for you, Alex. Okay. Some friends are having a birthday for one of their younger brothers. They have a GameCube permanently turned on with pretty much everything unlocked in Super Smash Bros. because they don't have a memory card because they were a bit poor. I get him a memory card as a present. When no one's watching, save the Smash data. Little later, nonchalantly ask, what's up with the GameCube? My hand is on the power button. Friend and his little brother freak out as I turn it off. Smallest one starts crying. Just kidding. Happy birthday. Plug in the memory card and turn it back on. Save file corrupted. Oh. <laughs> no. Solid. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Spodcast, the only podcast in the world coming at you by yours truly, Sumeto Media, and my co-host, Alex. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, good I got some got some shopping done in this weird time really uh i'm the only one in my family going out right now so i have to do all the shopping oh you mean for like groceries and stuff you're not like getting a brand new raincoat in the middle of this virus no that's what amazon's for right right <laughs> um wait so nobody else in your family has to leave the house like everybody else just says off from work work from home for my parents and my sisters are zooming on school that is a meme. Have you seen Two Mads video? I haven't. I, I, uh, I'm not wait. hit. Let me pull this up. I do quick. know. You, I have seen the subreddit. You can. Um, I think you can hear my audio, right? Uh, no. Can you hear this? But I'd like to point out for everyone who's a returning viewer, we have video now. I we hope. do have video now. Unless I fuck up this recording as well. Okay, so basically, Two Mad tweets out, "Hey, who's got Zoom lessons going on? Let me join your chat room." <laughs> And That's he's great. like just asking for like the intro or the IP or whatever. Yeah. And then he just jumps on and just starts like screaming in a Chinese accent. I will, I'll, in case this doesn't translate in the audio, I'm sure it will. Here's a small clip. I am uh, a Shashamya from what? I wish I had a class like that. I am new transfer student and this is my brother. For <laughs> me, And then you guys do have something Shashamga. to do. This is this is the future. I don't know. Wait, what? This is the future. Yeah, this shit's hilarious, dude. I mean, it feels bad, but on the other hand, you know, fuck education and school in general. So, yeah, you I know? feel bad for the teachers, <laughs> but it's good content. Yeah, that's that's mostly what it is. Uh, speaking of good content, uh, you've actually come up with what we're going to be doing on this podcast today. You're officially a podcast host, Alex. How does that make you feel? Uh, terrified. Why? Uh, what? I don't know. That's usually if my Joe response. If Joe Rogan to has a podcast, you can have a podcast. But he was on Fear Factor. He was desensitized. To what? To speaking on topics on the internet? Well, no. Once once you once you host Fear Factor and you're in a room where a guy had ten tarantulas on you, he you can do anything. I guess that's true. Like that pales in comparison to his actual UFC career. <laughs> yeah. The, the fear factor was more. <laughs> well, okay. I could be like, oh, uh, dude, I'm a little nervous of public speaking. Or uh, that dude jumped off a crane and I don't even remember what the reward was. <laughs> no. Yeah. But like Joe Rogan didn't do that. Stuff. No. He was but just, like he was just telling them. No. Hey, but like, we'll it's, like you... it, it's like hyper inspirational where like, like, like you see like what's his name michael phelps win like you know a million medals you're like hell yeah i mean you didn't do shit but you feel nice about it sure but what by that logic i should be just as hardened for watching episodes of fear factor as joe rogan would be from happening to have hosted them well he it was like it's like a proximity thing ah sure yes it's, of course they weren't in my city so yeah yeah that, that that one goes out to joe to be fair i had trouble watching those they were it was too much I couldn't do the the horse semen episodes. Oh, that was I still can't. I I I mean I feel like they've eaten and drank way worse stuff, but like the episode where they had to just chug a glass of horse semen for like fifty grand. I think Joe Rogan made this exact same joke. Where it was like it was just ridiculous. Can you look up what was the what was the price? What was like the like it was the fifty cash, grand? Was it 50, it was only fifty grand? Fifty grand. I would have said I'll, no. <laughs> Winning sums of money for Fear Factor. I'd rather Pretty go on sure Jeopardy. Grand. I'd rather go on Jeopardy. The couple wins a million on Fear Factor. Gilbert wins a million. No, but this is like the biggest one. 
Six couples compete in six stunts for various cash prizes, including a grand prize of two hundred fifty thousand. Ah, uh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, usually fifty thousand. Oh, that's not enough. Usually fifty thousand, and then they have the privilege to continue on to like the winners episode where they compete for a quarter mil. I couldn't do any of that stuff if I'm being completely honest. You only had to do three things, and none right? of them were in my ballpark. One of them was always super gross. One of them was typically heights or sharks or some shit. Yep. And the first one is basically just to weed out the bitches. It was like, hey, we're going to have a car drive out you, but not hit you. And then some people would be like, no, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> it like, Bro, it gets way harder from here. Like, why do you even sign up for Fear Factor? What the fuck? Anything with spiders or snakes, I'm gone. Not, not even a little. Not even a little. You don't fuck with things that have lots of legs or no legs. You're on the extremes. They have to only have four legs. Is that what you're saying? Four or two is preferred. <laughs> to all you paraplegics out there, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're too close to a snake. I can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Holy fuck. That was a tri- uh, tangent. What, uh, what are we doing today, Alex? Well, I found some, uh, some good BuzzFeed quizzes we can do since we're all stuck at home. That is... You know what? I actually, I already thought this was a good idea for a podcast, but I actually like this as a bonding experience. Yeah. Because this is like what pe- what like like girls in middle school would do, right? And see if they got the same celebrity crush or whatever. I think they still do, but yeah. Wait, really? Well, I guess how would I know, right? How long has it been since I've been in middle school? I haven't been a middle school girl in forever. Middle school was the <laughs> toughest six years for me, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. All right, hit me, hit me with a, hit me with an extravagant one. We got to set the tone uh, for people who have never heard of a BuzzFeed quiz. All right, well, I sent you one right now, so you can, we can start with this one. <laughs> All right, so the title of this one is "We Know Which Danny DeVito Character You Are Most Like Based on These." What? Oh, we know which Danny DeVito character you are most like based on these seven questions. So as a concept, it's my favorite that I found, but as a title, it may not be the best, but as a it, concept, it, it, it's Danny It hurts DeVito. my head, but it's okay. It's a lot of All right, so how, do, how do you think we should do this? Should we do this cumulatively and try and come with like what you and me together uh, as a podcast team would be, the, would, which Danny DeVito character would be the most like? I think we should do it for ourselves as we go through it and then see which character we each get. I don't think we should do it cumulatively. Oh, okay. Pick a career, politician, entrepreneur, teacher, business owner, activist, inventor. What is the difference between an entrepreneur and a business owner? Entrepreneur just becomes a business owner, doesn't he? Uh, Entrepreneur is someone who's really trying but not succeeding. That's not the definition of an entrepreneur. I'm saying in, in, in concept. I think I'm closest to an entrepreneur with this YouTube shit. I, I don't think business owner is correct because that's like a dude who owns like a burger shop or something more specific. I think entrepreneur in, it, um, tends to mean you start on your own, start like from the ground up, but you could be oh, a sure, business right. owner. You could just be like a manager, I think. You could just buy a business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, be, I'll do character. activist. Okay. Uh, choose a Disney character. Pumbaa, the Mad Hatter, Mulan, Anger, the Beast, or Governor Ratcliffe. Ooh, I could be. Is, wait, is that referring to X Men or Beauty? Know. Oh, Beauty and the Beast, probably. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. That makes yeah. more sense. No, yeah, because X Men is just Beast, not the Beast, right? Yeah. Um. Well, I want. I think I have to go with. I want to say the Beast and say that because I've made jokes about me and my girlfriend being Beauty and the Beast. But if I'm if I'm a character in a movie, let's be real honest with ourselves. I'm the comic relief, um, right? I'm not I'll, getting. I'm not getting the. I was. Main pick, I was gonna pick Pumbaa. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely Pumbaa. I'm just trying to get uh, the dad from uh, from, I uh, know, um, Matilda. <laughs> the dad from Matilda. He was like a car salesman or something. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm already. I'm, I'm far off. You're closer than me. <laughs> okay. Because uh, business choose owner. A cele- choose a celebrity: Bill Murray, Oprah Winfrey, Will Smith. Hey, that's Jason- hot. <laughs> Jason Sudeikis. Wait, I'm not saying that right. Am you I? did. You oh, got. Well, it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take another shot at it. No, you Steve got. Jobs you actually Taylor got Swift. it. Oh, good. Uh, Taylor Swift. Um, you didn't definitely pick, Bill Murray. You didn't pick. Uh, there's two SNLs here. Um, wait, I have to. I have to Google who Jason Sudeikis is. He's from that one weed movie too that you know. You know Jason, Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis. He's images, in Where the Millers. Images, images. You know Where the Millers. I do, but I don't know him from anything that like I would say is like my favorite movie or anything. He plays Biden on SNL usually. Yeah, no, I recognize his face from comedy. Nah, I think I have to go with Bill Murray. Bill Murray, classic Bill Murray, right? Yeah, that's definitely the celebrity. I'm picking Taylor Swift. (laughs) Okay. Choose a Nintendo character. Wario, Monty Mole, King K. Rule, Epona, Breedle, or King DDD. Can we talk about, like, this 
overall selection of people. <laughs> yeah. Give me give me your insight here. Who do you think wrote this article? What kind of person wrote this article? A Nintendo fan, obviously. Yeah? I mean, these are... Well, yeah, I guess throwing up... Well, you've also got Marvel characters as the next question, not to, not to jump ahead so far. Monty, Who do you think you're going with here? What's your what's your what's your thinking? I'm gonna do King K. Rule. That's a strong pick. I'm gonna go with Wario just because. Wow, yeah. you know what I mean? No, that's. But at what cost? <laughs> right. Um, oh, Thanos isn't an option here. Okay, so pick a Marvel character. We've got the Vulture, the Grandmaster, the Hulk, Justice Hammer, Doctor Strange, or Rocket Raccoon. Say, say Justice Hammer. Oh, Justin Hammer. Oh, sorry. I, I was getting way too heroic. That's way too cool of a name. <laughs> Justice Hammer. Yeah, no. Um, I'll do, again, I, I'll do I Rocket. Gotta be the, yeah, I got to be the comic relief. There's a small chance I could pick the Hulk because he's he's pretty comical in the in the movies where everybody's together. But, you know? Yeah. I mean, Ooh. nah, I'm, like I'm definitely more of a Rocket Raccoon for sure. All right. Now, a DC character. Lex Luthor, Swamp Thing, <laughs> Killer Croc. Itrigan the demon, Atrocitus. Why am I fucking this up so much? This, Atro- I'm not saying it. The right. person who Black made Canary. the person who made this list for the DC at least was trying to prove that they weren't like a Marvel fanboy, and they yeah. wanted to pick like super obscure. Like, like there's like four of these are obscure. Yeah, not only are four of these obscure, but like you, like the other one had the Hulk. Right, yeah, and and, and and to a lesser degree, Doctor Strange and Rocket Raccoon. Right, y- you could have thrown in Wonder Woman. Like, what? Nobody's gonna crucify you for that. What the fuck? I get they are also going for a uh, Bill Murray tie into all these characters, but uh, my thing I'm curious about is what does Black Canary lead to for for uh, for what's Danny DeVito? Oh, I'd love to know. That's why I'm picking Black Canary. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Killer Croc just because outside of Lex Luthor, that's the only one I recognize. Oh, I thought you were gonna say because you like Suicide Squad so much. I <laughs> I haven't even seen the movies. No one has. No, th- I like Killer Croc's whole um, situation in the Batman video games in Arkham Knight and uh, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, 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 he's a really cool character in those games, and I know him more from the games than I do the show because I'm a poser. All right, last question. I- Choose a TV show. Curb Your Enthusiasm, Rick and Morty, Simpsons, Community, Golden Girls, Seinfeld. This is so fucking easy. Seinfeld. Who the fuck even watches Golden Girls? What'd you get? I got... Oh, from Space Jam. Oh, I picked Rick and Morty, by the way. I got Mr. Swackhammer. Yes, from Space Jam. You're a ruthless business alien who will stop at nothing to keep his amusement park uh, moron mountain afloat, even if it means facing the Looney Tunes and Michael Jordan in a basketball game to determine whether or not they become your slaves. So I'm the antagonist in Space Jam. Yes. Based on the fact that I picked Rick and Morty as my go-to TV show. Uh, I think I think, I think Killer Croc, Croc had a uh, factor there, too. Killer Croc probably had a factor. Well, can I change the... No, I can't change them. And you, can redo, it, you can redo it. Just refresh the page, probably. I don't, I don't know what that says about me if I take a BuzzFeed quiz twice to get a different answer. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you in my... I don't want to say research, but just double-checking. I, I I ran I ran the same test twice just to make sure it wasn't the same like result no matter what you did. Well, I, yeah, I mean I would want somebody to run the same test twice with the same answers just to make sure it's not random at the end. Oh, that, that could also be that a, would have been a way better test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who did you get? I got the Lorax. What? Yeah, you know from the Lorax. <laughs> what does that say about you? I protect the trees. Apparently, it's because I picked activist. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I hate a one question. Some of these probably have absolutely nothing to do with your results. <laughs> they just wanted to put you. cool stuff in it. Yeah. Some like maybe two of these questions actually. Marvel character. You think Rocket Raccoon really went into me getting Mr. Swackhammer? Well, we like, both no. we both picked Rocket Raccoon, and I got the Lorax. You got <laughs> Swackhammer. I don't remember what his name was. Swackhammer. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing this thing that was like. If you've ever taken a quiz to see what character you're on, the, uh, to see who, wait, what am I saying? I saw this thing that said, if you're ever taking a quiz to find out which one of the office characters you are, and you get Michael, but you take it a bunch of times until you get Jim, you're definitely a Michael. <laughs> that, <laughs> and I was like, that makes sense. That's, that's so specific, but whoa, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Well, I'll be honest. I don't actually know Danny DeVito's characters all that well. I know he's got an extensive acting career. He's like the Ron Jeremy, but of actual film. One time I was watching for a, we were in a literature class and one of the books we were reading had a movie based on it. Right. Uh, and it was the most depressing book ever. I can't remember what it was called, but basically it, this one guy's daughter commits suicide and right before she does it, she goes to see a therapist and the therapist is Danny DeVito. And for a brief second, you think, oh, this movie's gonna be like a quirky type movie where Danny DeVito is the quirky therapist and he like tries to get her to not be depressed anymore or something like that. And then like two scenes later, she kills herself by jumping out of her roof onto the fence. Right. And impales herself like five different ways. Right. And then the movie ends with the four other daughters committing mass suicide. Gee, holy shit, man. And this was for a, a literature class. Wait, so you're telling me Danny DeVito doesn't make a reappearance at the end? No, he just was in one scene. He doesn't walk for five by and minutes. go, suicide is badass. <laughs> I wish. Someone could, Someone can do an edit, though. Someone Someone in the comments. All right, what do you what what do you got next for me, Alex? What do you got? This was I, this was not a bad quiz. I'll be real honest with you. This was all right. No, these are all these are all quality. Nothing but quality from BuzzFeed. Choose some potato foods, and we'll reveal if you're an introvert or an extrovert. And for some reason, yeah. the thumbnail to this quiz was a bag of potatoes followed by Kim Kardashian on a couch. All right. <laughs> yeah. First of all, pick your favorite type of potato. We've got baby potatoes, sweet potatoes, russets, Yukon Golds, red potatoes, and vitalot potatoes, the, the weird purple I'm gonna be, bushy ones. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There's there's only one real answer here, and it's Yukon Gold. Is it actually? My answer is red. Ooh. Oh, no. I'm more of a fan of roasted herby potatoes than I am like mashed potatoes. That's why. And and the first schism in the podcast is shown. <laughs> It's over. We can't be friends. The, the, cra the cracks are forming. Oh, I like this one, though. Pick your favorite potato chip flavor. The people don't think about this. They go, oh, potatoes are so great. You've got French fries. You've got hash browns. You've got mashed potatoes. Motherfuckers forget about the flavor profiles you get from different potato chips. They forget this is a potato once you add some fucking salt and vinegar. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So the options we have here, they're all Lay's. We've got classic. A family-sized barbecue. Don't know why they went with that image. <laughs> I don't think the family size makes a difference. Salt and vinegar, sour cream and onion, cheese onion, and jalapeno kettle cooked. I'm going to let you go first on this. What's your go-to if you had to pick one of these to accompany a sandwich or something? Barbecue every day of the week. And because I'm fat, family size. I don't blame you there. I'm going to go with sour cream and onion. I think that's the only one I would enjoy eating for an extensive period of time. If I only had to have mm -hmm. one bag of it, I would definitely grab a bag of salt and vinegar if it was like I also had a sandwich. But I'm just not I'm not just straight up eating those. What the fuck? They destroy your mouth. Yeah, yeah. All right, favorite type of french fries. I am very specific about this. Yeah. Steak fries, curly fries, thin fries, sweet potato, crinkle cut, waffle fries. There's only two that are acceptable, but one that is clearly superior. IMO. I'm sure it's not a popular opinion here but what's what's your what are you going with here uh, i'm just gonna go through it steak fries too thick for me okay don't like it sure too much too much potato in my opinion okay C curly fries they could be good but every, every time they get it from a place too mushy not not about that sure thin thin fries they tend to be a little crunchier i like the crunch sweet potato fries only satan eats those <laughs> Crinkle cut fries no idea what that is those are the ones you get in uh frozen bags at the grocery store no, thank you. <laughs> Waffle fries. Uh, I didn't like them, but then I tried them at Chick-fil-A and I liked them a little more. But thin fries is my answer. Okay. Uh, we are two different people. <laughs> my answer is steak fries. This isn't you talking to yourself? <laughs> there, <laughs> there are few things in life I like more than a good steak fry. I just don't like the thickness. That's just me. Because if you cook them wrong, they're fucked. But if you cook them correctly, you get the crispness. You, you just you just describe food in general, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. You can, you could have a poorly cooked quesadilla. I'd probably still fuck with it. There's certain foods that you can have all right. Not a lot, I guess though, you're maybe right. that. But steak fries, you cook them right, and you get the crunch of a French fry, but then the smooth, fluffy interior of mashed potatoes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So they're excellent. And they're the, you never see steak fries with like a Cajun seasoning or some shit to cover up the fact that you're not cooking them right because you're making a billion of them at a time at a restaurant, which I find with the case with curly fries, which would be my favorite if they were always perfect every time they were cooked. And they never I feel are. like the, I feel like curly fries on this list are the ones made worse. Like they like have the most potential. Poorly. They yeah. clearly have the most potential. But, but they're always undercooked. But they're never, yeah. Half the time they're undercooked. They're only really good for about a 10 minute period before they just disintegrate. But steak fries. and What a wasted concept. Yeah. Steak, fr steak fries are excellent. They're thick. You can eat them with a fork and knife with an actual steak and they sop up the fucking steak juices. That's like nine times out of 10. If I'm not eating it with like Peruvian chicken, I'm eating it with steak. Bomb. Yeah. Thin fries, I don't fuck with. Now, if curly fries were fries shaped like that guy from the Three Stooges, that, I'd be on board. That'd be on another fucking... You're talking about Mo? That'd be another fucking level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking Mo-shaped fries and we call them curly fries? I'd be all over that. Yep, all right. Pick a classic potato side dish. Mash. Oh, my God. Easy baked, choice. French fries. Potato gratin. Potato salad. Hasselback potatoes? I actually have to Google. I was going to ask you too. Hasselback. Like Matt Hasselback? You're not going to get that joke. I'm not good with It's a sports reference. Oh, these are Oh, so you just you just slice a potato into a bunch of like chips what? basically. But and, and no, this is what they do. They put butter in between the slices and then bake it. And then it comes oh. out crispy on the outside and then like, yeah. And then look, Maybe if I tried that, it would be an easier question. I, the answer is so obvious for this one. <laughs> what what are you giving me? I don't think it's, it is. It, it's french fries french fries are the classic potato side dish yeah i gotta think about this one because i don't want the, is the situation like i could only have this side dish for the rest of my life i have to pick one i don't know if i put that kind of way in a buzzfeed quiz but sure <laughs> i mean i like french fries what what's your, what's your second uh, let's i think i yeah. have to go with potato salad oh i would never as a side dish i mean baked that's not even that, that's not even my second <laughs> baked potatoes or whatever mashed potatoes are fine like they're not bad but a good potato salad is like crunch mayo I, cold like i don't i don't like potato salad i'll say it i i understand that this probably isn't the most popular thing in the world i i don't even necessarily think i'd pick a potato salad over french fries isn't the joke that potato salad is like whatever and that's why it if you're making like celebrity comparisons, John Cena is the potato salad. <laughs> I've heard that before. That's like he's not bad, but he's not great. I mean, he's there. Yeah. You can't see him, but he's there. He's a staple classic. He'll be there. But I don't know. When I think a side dish, it's like, hey, we need a potato side dish. Like I'm thinking mashed potatoes or potato salad. I'm not thinking baked potatoes because in my mind, baked potatoes is an entree. <laughs> Maybe I'm picking two American foods because if I'm like, if I think, someone's like, you're getting a burger, what do you want to use your side? I'm not saying mashed potatoes. No, I don't think potato salad is my... I think my answer is french fries. I just like potato salad, and I don't think it's going to come up again in the quiz, so I want to talk about it. I'd be but surprised I, if it did. But yeah. I mean, but in what situation is your side options fries or a potato salad? It never is. They're in two completely different situations. You're getting maybe fries at barbecue. fast... Maybe at like a barbecue or like a cookout. Exactly. You're not getting french fries at a barbecue. You can't. You're getting potato salad. Maybe not yours. Maybe not mine. That's fair. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with French fries, even though I've never had. Because there's a that like there's potato. like there's like Frito Lay's or whatever. It's um there's like oven fries you can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh, I don't know about a barbecue. Eh, may maybe it's the barbecues I've attended. Sure. Pick another potato food. This one isn't very specific. But yeah, we've got we've got gnocchi, potato pancakes, hash browns. Potato croquettes, tater tots, or potato casserole? This one is... It just says to pick another one. one. It's not even really asking your favorite. It just says, hey, pick one. <laughs> well, close your eyes. Um, Hash browns. I'll just say that. I mean, hash browns over tater tots, but it becomes, would I pick gnocchi? Would I pick a pasta over a hash brown? I think I would. Because I'd only eat a hash brown on its own ever so often, but gnocchi's got so many. Yeah, it's gnocchi. Um, I'm an extrovert. I'm an introvert. <laughs> I forgot that that's what this quiz was. <laughs> you enjoy being the center of attention and meeting new people. Only one of those is true. 
You enjoy being with friends and family. Only one of those is true. And doing something energetic and fun. Again, only one of those is true. You hate staying in and you probably have lots of friends. Um, All right, you want to hear mine? Yeah, go for it. Although you occasionally like to be around friends and loved ones, you feel a lot safer and calmer spending time on your own or at least with a small group of friends. Like, damn. I don't even think that's that wrong, to be honest with you. I mean, the idea is that anybody can relate to an introvert. Like, I, I, I wait, feel... Scroll, let's, let's go through some of these questions and see how it would have... How, if how they construed it to be sure. an introvert I'm going to retake this quiz and let's try and get introvert, right? The most introverted okay. answers you could give. So your okay. favorite potato... Uh, what's a potato? You <laughs> an introvert? It would have to be red potatoes. Well, it can't, it, it can't be a food that you it can't lead to a food that would make you eat like with a group of people exactly. so fries are out yeah so it wouldn't be russet potatoes exactly red potatoes where are you getting roasted red potatoes outside your house you're not no so it's got to be roast red potatoes now, i could say that even more so with the vitalette potatoes where the fuck are you finding these say, i've never even seen them in my life so you think we should go with that that's got to be something yeah. you get at the farmer's market yeah Okay. Oh, no, that's too social, actually. actually go back yeah, to red. yeah, red potato, red potato. Okay. God, you have to go out somewhere? Right. <sighs> Favorite Disgusting. potato chip flavor. I think this is still... Sour cream, salt and vinegar or sour cream and onion? No, no, no. I think, it's, I think it's barbecue. No, because barbecue you eat at, like a, at a gathering. No, but barbecue is also the go-to default, I'm grabbing this for the house. Mom always gets barbecue. What? That's also, what? This is also no, always it, the flavor you'd have in the house, though. It's sour cream and onion because your breath stinks and no one wants to be around you. <laughs> Yeah, either one of those. Okay, fine. We'll go with sour cream and onion. I'll give you that one. Um, favorite type of French fries? I think it would have to be crinkle cut because those are the frozen fries. <laughs> yeah. Those are the ones you get at home. That heathens. Classic potato dish? Uh, <laughs> this has got to be um, baked potatoes or mashed baked, potatoes. Yeah, that's that's the lazy food you can just make. Yeah, baked, yeah, you can't make mashed potatoes in a microwave, so we'll go with baked potatoes. And then well, another could. potato food? There's literally microwave mashed potatoes. That's literally a thing. Why do I not know food? You'd think being this fat, I would know food. But apparently I've <laughs> never heard of like simple shit. Like, yeah, of course there's microwave mashed potatoes. What's wrong with me? I guess they're just gross. Maybe I've never had. They're not bad. Another potato Al food. Although, from what I've been told, if you have to add milk to make it better, it's not good. That's what I, that's like powdered potatoes, right? Powdered mashed potatoes. That's what you do. You add milk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, another potato food. This has to be uh Either tater tots or potato casserole, right? Mom makes casserole and microwave potato tater tots? Yeah. Let's go with tater tots. We got extrovert. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the exact same description. That's weird. Huh. I mean, it's not. It's a BuzzFeed article, but... Huh. All right, whatever. Let's. I mean, let's not overthink the potato introvert extrovert article. Overthinking is my thing. Let's let's move on to the next article. What what I want to learn more. Find one that's about us. Do you have like a love quiz? Uh, Could we see how compatible we are as a podcasting duo? Uh, I'll look for one. Let me send you this one. We can do in the meantime. Sure. What do we got? Um, can we guess your relationship status based on the grocery shopping you do? I feel like this should be pretty easy, right? Uh, yeah. I don't think they should be getting this one wrong. All right, you doing this one with me? Yes, I am. Okay, pick some ice cream. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry are the only options. I'm probably going with vanilla here. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a vanilla person. I'm more of a chocolate person, but my girlfriend doesn't really do chocolate, and I'm not that strong about it. But I want to see if this, I want to see if this quiz would be able to pick that up. Pick some pizza to eat. Pepperoni, cheese, supreme. What are you going with here? Um, let me see. Well, I'll do. Uh, what what are we saying is on Supreme? Uh, so Supreme Pizza is, uh, it's like four meats. Then Supreme. So mine is cheese. I would I would huh. be okay with a Supreme Pizza, but again, girlfriend prefers cheese pizza, and she doesn't eat pork, and the two other options are pork. If I was being a better son, I also would be like her. <laughs> uh, pick some bread. We've got, why, why are these white on light yellow? I can barely read these. Cinnamon. Oh, here we go. I can highlight it. Cinnamon raisin bread, wheat bread, white bread. Am I on a diet? 
the question's what you're bringing home from the grocery store. God damn. Um, my answer is white bread. Wheat. I like. Yeah, I like cinnamon raisin, but not as the only bread in my house. No, I do that's, like cin- that's for, that's for crazy people. I do cinnamon raisin like bagels and stuff because I think they're cool. Uh, choose a type of pasta: spaghetti, fettuccine alfredo, and a pasta salad. <laughs> <laughs> you were hoping for a really like a pasta- Italian word. <laughs> Mama, where's the potato salad? <laughs> Somebody a touch of my spaghetti. <laughs> All right, choose the type of pasta. Um, Fettuccine Alfredo. Uh, yeah, Alfredo. Who gets just spaghetti? Why couldn't they write spaghetti and meatballs or something? Yeah, and it says grocery. Like you're bringing home Fettuccine Alfredo. You're not bringing home <laughs> like pasta shells, and then you With have white Alfredo sauce. sauce. And, yeah, yeah. Choose your favorite cereal. These are dog shit options for my favorite cereal. Don't be talking bad about Honey Nut. Honey Nut Cheerios, Special K raise Red Berries. That's that's specifically the one I meant. And Cocoa Pebbles. Uh, not much to work with here. I'm going with these Cocoa are, Pebbles. These are shitty ass. I'm going with Cocoa Pebbles. I think. I'm Honey Nut Cheerios. If it was just Cheerios, I'd agree with you, but no, it's Honey Nut. No, Honey, honey Nut, Nut Cheerios aren't it. bad. Honey Nut tips it. Cocoa Pebbles I've had before. Honey Nut Cheerios I haven't had outside of the context of like eating them dry out of a plastic bag. That's the only way I've ever had honey nut Cheerios. There's another way. <laughs> okay, look, if you look at the pictures for these foods, by the way, yeah. there's no, I don't see any milk in that honey nut Cheerios bowl. Yeah, fuck that. But there's there's milk in the other two. They know their target audience. That's also like 200 times the amount of cereal you would eat in like a serving size. Have you seen people who do like challenges where they eat a serving size, only serving sizes for a day? And they, I always I always eat seven fries. <laughs> they start off their day with a bowl of cereal and they weigh out like 30 grams of cereal or whatever it is. And they're like, Disgusting. wait. Disgusting. <laughs> they're like, wait, a serving size isn't half the box? Like, I'm confused. <laughs> you mean I'm not supposed to just sit down and eat it all? Uh, a type of shellfish. Don't tell me you're allergic to shellfish here, Alex. I'm not that selfish. You have an option for I don't like shellfish. That's, uh, I guess that is that's, some people. That's, that's for the Jewish people. <laughs> uh, mine is shrimp, 100% shrimp. Yeah, I'll go shrimp. That's also like the easiest thing to cook. I don't know if I could cook if lobster it, at the if, house. If it floats, it's done. Or the opposite. I can't remember which one. If it's doing the opposite of what it did when you put it in the in the <laughs> water. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mom, which is it? Is it float? Is it float? Wait, for what? Shrimp? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't cook shrimp in boiling water. Oh, you don't boil it. I like de-shell no. it, and I do like a like a garlic um, butter thing, and you cook it in the oven. Oh, you've never been to the? I, I go to the beach and just get like a pound of it and just throw it in a I do, giant container. I do that at like seafood places, at like Chase and Tails and stuff. But I'm not the you one cooking it, so I don't. I you're don't not the, you're not just sitting at a table de-shelling like a million shrimps. I am, but after it's been cooked. Okay. Yeah, so same. That's what I'm saying. Well, what are you talking about them floating then? Are you you not, put them in the water when you're cooking them. You're boiling it when the chef is. But then once they've dealt with whether or not it's floating, or I'm not. not it I'm comes not to saying. Me. No, I'm not. I'm saying like when we take it back to like the beach house and stuff. Right. I'm not like going out to dinner. Every, I'll just go out to like the farmers market at like the Outer Banks or whatever. Get like you know two pounds, five pounds. I don't care. You're talking about cooking it at home though. Yeah. When you're talking about deshelling them. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm saying I've never cooked shrimp. In the way that you would get it at a restaurant with the shell on and everything. I've only ever de-shelled it, de-veined it, and cooked it in like the way that you throw it into a pasta or something. We don't all have, we don't all have chefs. <laughs> Pick a vegetable. Why why is there not an option for I don't like vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. It's Broccoli, like my mom. sweet potato, or eggplant. Well, I mean the the lesser of, the lesser of three evils. I'm not eating a fucking eggplant. Get out of here. Miss sweet me with that gay for, shit. <laughs> sweet potatoes are for Satan. Uh, choose a type of rice. Brown rice. I don't like rice. <laughs> why is there I don't like rice? <laughs> okay, two I, things. Two things. This, what, this why quiz, is I don't like? This quiz was made by a middle school cafeteria lady. <laughs> she was like, she was like, I'm gonna make a quiz, but you gotta get a fruit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a vegetable. Uh, I'm going with white rice. Fuck brown rice. Bra- brown rice. Fuck oh. brown rice. <laughs> I see how it is. Fuck all brown people. I, I can't even no. tell. It's so hard to tell. Oh. <laughs> brown rice. No brown rice. Choose a fruit. God damn it. I don't like fruit. 
Avocado? Thanks. Hey. Oh, fuck. I mean, in, grapes. in grapes. any other... Grapes bang, but I don't know. In the right context, avocado is a meal on its own, so I'm going to go with avocado. <laughs> I just forgot what quiz we were taking. By the <laughs> what did you get? <laughs> what did you get? I got taken. I got single. What? And for a second, I thought we were doing it like a what is your favorite movie quiz? <laughs> and yours was taken? <laughs> Aw, uh, dude, I got another Liam Neeson film as my... <laughs> God damn it. I was going for Star Wars. Holy fuck. You're always in my heart, qui -Gon. I got single. In a relationship uh. for five years, and I get single. This quiz is awful. <laughs> I want to do this one. You also gave your answers in some ways, like, based off of what your girlfriend likes. Yeah. <laughs> and the like, and it, shy it showed zero ways in your quiz. I would answer a couple of these very differently if I didn't need to factor in that my girlfriend doesn't eat pork and doesn't like chocolate and stuff like that. So that's disappointing. <sighs> There's there's this quiz that's been catching my eye. Hold on, I want to do this one. Where? Oh no, I must. Oh wait, no, I have it open here. See if you can find a, a relationship one for us, Alex. I I did. Okay. Well, let's do this one real quick. I'm, I there's one I found that's like, what is the compatibility with your significant other? Oh and, uh, hell of course, yeah. I'm you. I'm you. You're me. Yeah, we'll just do that. We are going we'll to get the highest score because we are the do you best. You want to send me that one by the way, so I can do this one with you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Copy. A shipist. I thought you were gonna say pasta. <laughs> So this quiz is, can we guess if you are a Gen Zer, which is a Zoomer, a Millennial, mm -hmm. which is a Moomer, or a Gen Xer, which is a Schumer, based on the celebrities you choose? Okay. All right. Choose a celebrity that starts with A. A. Rihanna Grande, Alex Rodriguez, Adison Ray, or Anthony Reeves? Who's Anthony Reeves? I don't know. And I don't think you should be allowed to look them up because these are celebrities. If you don't know who they are... Well, I, By name. I just want to see their. I just want to see their face. I guess. I guess. Yeah, you know the other ones though, Alex Rodriguez and Addison Ray. Well, my name's Alex, so people constantly called me A Rod growing up. So I'm definitely not picking him. <laughs> I'm going with Ariana Grande. I no, I want to pick uh, these. I was gonna do the same thing. I want to pick these based on which celebrity. I oh just my god, like. this is for is this for the whole alphabet? <laughs> Maybe. I just want to do this based on which celebrity I like, in whatever way more, rather than um. Like trying to guess which one of these would make me which one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barack Obama, Billie Eilish, Beyonce, or Bryce Hall. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, that's going to be this whole thing. This is tough. I mean, I'm not picking Barack Obama if the other two are pop stars. Sasha, Malia, I'm picking Barack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm doing don't Beyonce. Be don't be fooled by the Baracks that I got. I'm doing I'm doing Beyonce. I like Billie Eilish, but I have too much respect for Jay Z to not pick Beyonce. I would have picked Billie if it wasn't for Brock. Yeah, uh, Chris Pratt, Clint Eastwood, Charlie D'Amelio, or Camila Cabello's. Why is that Gorillas song on here? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, you got to give it to the Gorillas, man. They really put this Clint Eastwood guy on the map, dude. <laughs> they really did. Also, that a favor. the song on that. Uh, they also name songs after his characters too. Really. Dirty Harry is one of his is a cop character. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. And there's another one, but I don't remember what it was. But I'm picking Clint. I know who Charlie D'Amelio and Camila Cabello are, just for the record. But I'm going uh, with Chris Pratt. Havana Unana. Yeah, that one. Um, I'm going with Chris Pratt though. I like I like the I, anybody who's gone from comedy to mainstream movies. I respect thoroughly because I know that can't be easy to do, and I and I hope for that. For myself one day. we talked about this last week it's the same thing he was paid by the biggest studio in the world <laughs> to get ripped yeah well no not chris pratt's first role so chris pratt initially was living in southern california hold on i think i'm gonna sneeze pika achoo uh no i fucked it up pika -choo! <laughs> excuse me did i do it are you impressed did it. mom did i do it so chris pratt was yeah. living Chris Pratt was living more or less homeless in, in California out of a van mm -hmm. when he got the role to do Parks and Recreations and then did Parks and Recreations. The story is uh, also the same if you subbed in uh, Jim Carrey. Yeah. But not with Parks and Rec. Um, once he got the role for Parks and Rec, he got the role for like a military movie. I forget what it was. He was telling this on an interview on The Tonight Show and he really wanted the part. But they were like, you have to be like you're a Marine in this movie. So he's works out a fuck ton, 
loses a stupid amount of weight. And he has the same, you know, super buff before and after that he does for this military movie. And he gets it. And I think that's his first, like, key into real, like, Hollywood films and whatever. No, he, he was in Wanted. What? Do you remember Wanted? With Angelina Jolie? Yeah, he was the douchebag uh, friend who's effing his girlfriend. The- Wanted 2008 and then Chris Pratt military movie. Couldn't have been before 2008, right? Dark Zero Thirty. That's the movie I'm thinking you mean of. Zero Dark Thirty. Zero Dark Thirty. Sorry, and that's 2012. So yeah, he was in Wanted for. But the movie that he got super ripped for was Zero Dark Thirty. And no, it, it was it was it was. Uh, no, it's yeah, Zero Dark Guardians. Thirty because I, I recognize the screen grab. It was Guardians. That Zero Dark Thirty was definitely before Guardians, though, wasn't it? I don't know. Look it up. Guardians of the Galaxy. Because the picture we all know is from. 2014. No, no, no. Two years after. Well, the ripped picture we all know is from, is from Guardians, where he took that screenshot. That I mean, that selfie screenshot. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I could have sworn it was from Zero. Well, anyway, he got super buff. Did Zero Dark Thirty. I could have sworn that's what the selfie was from. Then he got the role in. He didn't get the ro- wait. Didn't he do Jurassic Park before? Guardians? No, no, not before Guardians, no. So he did Guardians, and then he did Jurassic Park, and I think Guardians was definitely his first big, big, big film, and then Jurassic yeah. Park was also huge. But anyway, yeah, Chris Pratt. Holy shit, this is the whole alphabet. All right, we got to do this rapid fire. Get real quick, Bye. real quick jokes for the rest of these, all right? Dixie D'Amelio, Dolly Parton, Dwayne Johnson, Daniel Cohen. Uh, I'll pick the uh, Samoan John Cena. I am also going with The Rock. Uh, Emma Chamberlain, Amelia Clark, Elvis Presley, or Ellen DeGeneres? Uh, it's between Elvis and Daenerys. Um, Elvis. I'm going with Emma Chamberlain. Her taste in coffee reflects my taste in men. Fucking hate coffee. Choose a celebrity that starts with F. Frank Ocean, Phineas O'Connell, Freddie Mercury, or Finn Wolfhard? Uh, I'll do Freddie. I don't have the big teeth to do the voice, though. I, I'm going to go with Finn Wolfhard just because I like Stranger Things and I feel like everybody else I only know from a meme. Uh, Gwyneth Who's, Paltrow. G- what? No, we go back. We're rapid firing. I don't care. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, Gigi Hadid, Gal Gadot, or Gwen Stefani. This shit uh, is so easy. Gwen e- Stefani. A-S-A-S-A-S. Because she was in a ska band. Is that true? Uh, no doubt. Started as a ska band. Oh, did not know that. Harry Styles, Harrison Ford, Haley Steinfeld, or Haley Bieber? Who's Haley Bieber? Uh, Harrison, by the way. Haley Bieber uh, married Justin Bieber. Uh, I'm going with Harry Styles. What? Does that hurt? Does that hurt my chances of what? Becoming a believer? No, I think they just accept anybody. Hell yeah. Um, uh, I don't really know any of these people that way. I know who Harrison Ford is, but I'm not like a huge fan of his movies or anything. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Harry Styles. Uh, oh, I'm hurt. Idris I, Elba, Iggy Azalea, uh, Isla Fisher, or Ice T. Isla Fisher, Idris Elba. Wait, can we can we do a little aside here? What? Look look up um, Isla Fisher, and then in a different tab, look up. Uh, I think Amy Adams. Amy tell Adams. Me about the same person. Yeah. Images. Amy Adams is a person. Isla Fisher is a person. Do they look the same? I'm. I can't even tell which tab is which. <laughs> What am They're I supposed to know people. these people from? Isla Fisher was in Now You See Me and Now You See Me Too. Okay. And the was other now one you see was me first? in Ar- and the, another one was in Arrival, that alien language movie. Uh, I'm not going to know obscure movies. I'm sure it's not even that's, obscure. That's I, just don't, obscure. I just don't know movies. Oh, she's in The Fighter. I've seen The Fighter. Is she the wife? You saw the more <laughs> obscure movie that she's... Yes. Yeah. To be fair, there but neither of them are obscure. She's uh she also is in the Suits Man of Steel movies. Ah, okay. The only reason I even want to pick Idris Elba here is because he was in that music video with Stormzy for Vossy Bop. Uh Jennifer uh, Lopez. Sorry? We can't pick uh Iggy because she bullies kids, and we don't bully kids here. Is that true? What about that I'm really just, fine I'm, looking one the other day that we made cry? I'm just giving us a soundbite for the controversy in five years. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. Hell yeah, we got a plan ahead I'm, for this. I'm I'm setting us up. Jennifer Lopez, Joshua Bassett, Joaquin Phoenix, or Josh Richards? Oh, if I pick Joaquin Phoenix, I'm just I'm I mean, selling out. It's going to say a lot about society. I'm picking oh, Joaquin. God, we live in a society. <laughs> uh, Kim Kardashian, Katy Perry, Kylie Jenner, Keanu Reeves. Well, 
Uh, That's an obvious uh, one for me, just because... I'll do like, Keanu. Yeah, Keanu. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Lizzo, Liza Koshy, or LeBron James? Uh, I took a DNA test, and it's 100% DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Margot Robbie, Amadia Polibio, Michael Jordan, or Michael Fassbender? I'm going to assume they mean Michael B. Jordan, the more famous one, so I'll pick him. <laughs> I'm also going to go with Michael Jordan. Uh, Nelson Mandela, Nick Jonas, Noah Schnapp, or Nessa Barrett? I'm going Nelson with, Mandela. <laughs> I'm going with Nick Jonas, but why is Nelson Mandela even up here with, like, ce- he's a celebrity? Who's your favorite celebrity? Martin Luther King. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You got to scroll down to M now. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo, Orlando Bloom, Oprah, or OBJ? I'll do. I was a Giants fan. I'll be OBJ. I'm gonna go with OBJ just because I'm a fan of that Drake song. Uh, Priyanka Chopra, Post Malone, Patrick Star, or Patrick Dempsey. I'm going with Posty, obviously. Uh, obviously, Pri- Chop. I can't say it, but I'll. I'm <laughs> Priyanka it Chopra. Oh no! What does she look like? It doesn't matter what she looks like. She's a terrible person. But I'm not gonna go. Is she? It. Yeah, man. She uh, married a bad. Jonas brother. I, oh. Wait, is that did who I'm you, Did of? you pick? Did you pick? Nick Jonas? Nick Jonas is fine. I don't have... Who'd she marry? Huh? Who'd she marry? Nick Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> Am I remembering this wrong? Wait. I don't Priyanka know. Priyanka Chopra, Indian actress. Um, yeah, married Nick Jonas. Oh, so the guy you picked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know. Instead don't... of Nelson Mandela. Fuck Nelson Mandela. <laughs> what songs has he made in the last 10 years? Uh, there's probably one of those like African celebrity songs. He was he, probably a cameo. No, there was a whole thing where people were being like murdered in South Asia. And with me being from South Asia and my girlfriend being from South Asia, Priyanka Chopra uh, opting to uh, stay on the side of like the government or whatever. I don't remember the details, but basically she, she did the thing where, you know, the Chinese actress who played Mulan, you, you know, the Mulan movie that came out, right? Yeah. So the actress in that chi- in that movie is like, comes from a family in like high uh, Chinese royalty. Her family's in like high places. Her uncle's like a military leader and some other things. And she spoke out against uh, like against the Hong Kong protests basically. And it's like, well, Is of it course like, you did. Like LeBron. Uh, right. Wait, did I pick LeBron James? It doesn't oh, matter. No. But anyway, a similar thing, but with a different situation in South Asia that has Priyanka on my bad side. I got, I got you. Meanwhile. Well, uh, fortunately, I picked her. <laughs> meanwhile, I'm going with Post Malone. Um... Celebrity that starts... Oh, I keep reading. the Queen Latifah, Quentin Tarantino, Quavo, Queen Nyjah. I'll do Quentin. I'm, I'm also going to go with off. Quentin. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, Robert De Niro, Rihanna, or Robert Downey Jr.? Part I, of me would say Ryan Reynolds, but my my actual favorite actor is Robert De Niro. Um, I think I'm going to go with Downey Jr. I like Ryan Reynolds, but I love Iron Man. So. I don't know. He's, did you see his kid? Did you see him in the Hobbs and Shaw movie ripping on Game of Thrones? Nah. It turns out, I think I read that he asked to be in Hobbs and Shaw just so he could make fun of Game of Thrones ending. Who, Robert Downer Jr.? No, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, hell yeah. Man after my own heart then. I'll give him props. Yep. But Iron Man, you know. Sean Mendez, yeah. Selena Gomez, Shakira, or Sofia Vergara? Uh, hips don't lie. Oh, he got a point there. I was about to say Sofia Vergara, but what am I doing skipping over Shakira? Tom Holland, Taylor Swift, Taylor Holder, uh, Tom Hanks. It feels like they just mixed up the first and last names for all four of these options. Oh, no. Um, uh, I'm going to go with Tom Holland just because I don't with- know about going with Tom Hanks after that After that Ricky Gervais um, interview. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I know. it wasn't an interview. Not an was interview. It? It at the, the Golden Globes. Golden Globes. Tom Hanks didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> No, he, got, he, he, he got Corona. He do, he does. We don't know yet if he's done anything wrong, but it's like, what are you getting all upset about with Ricky Gervais calling out Hollywood? You got something to hide, Tom Hanks? That's that's what the that's what it was. I don't think I could. I don't think I could emotionally take that. My <laughs> guy brought down Tom Hanks. Oprah had her house stormed and arrested for child trafficking. The world's on its head, bro. How about yours? I don't get it. I was doing a Smash Mouth. Tom Holland, Usain Bolt, <laughs> Usher, Uzo Aduba, or Uma Thurman? Uh, I like that song, so Uma Thurman. Yeah, same. Uh, Vin Diesel, Victorious Justice, Vera Farmiga. Victorious. Oh, sorry, Victoria Justice, Vera Farmiga, or Vince Vaughn? Uh, I like Dodgeball with Vince Vaughn. I'm going to go with Victoria Justice. 
Willow Smith, Woody. It's good cheekbones. Yeah. Willow Smith, Woody Harrelson, Wendy Williams, or William Jackson Harper. I don't know a lot of these people. I'll pick Woody Harrelson, but shout out to whip my hair back and forth. I would force you to not pick Wendy Williams if you went with Wendy Williams. I'm going to go with Willow Smith. That's fine. She has a couple new songs that are very good, by the way. Can we talk about how it's it's it's, it's raining? Will? Man. Yeah, Will named Will. What's Will's? Yeah, and then what's J- the wife's name? Uh, Jada. Jada and Jaden. Jaden, yeah. yeah. That's kind of narcissistic, but you know what? He's cool. It's kind of cute. My parents did a similar thing where they were like, if I was born, um, if they had a girl, my mom would get to name her, and if they had a boy. My dad would get to name him, and they had a boy, me, obviously, so he named me Fahad, because his first name is starts with an F, so he named me Fahad. But then my mom just started calling me Samet, <laughs> just to, oh. indefinitely. So when we moved, when I moved into this country, and my dad was signing me up for elementary school, he was like, "Fuck it, let's just go with Samet," and then wrote my name as Samet on all the American paperwork. So I've just, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've just gone by Samet, and my mom's gotten her way as a result. Damn, I, my name power move, right? My name was picked out of a hat. Alex? Yeah. I mean my dad I uh, guess like like the show Family Ties. And really? is that actually your namesake? Yeah, Michael uh my uh, Michael J. Fox character. That's funny. Okay, yeah, uh, my mom my mom threw Andre in there because she liked Andre Agassi. Bro, imagine you were Andre. I don't think I'm an Andre. I think you'd Do have you? a thicker accent if you were Andre. No, I mean you're taller than I am, right? Yeah. In another world where you stayed like 400 pounds, you'd be a hell of an Andre. I guess. You'd be the Andre. Too close to home, but yeah. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. Yvette Nicole Brown, Yara Shidi, Yoko Ono, or Youngblood? Uh, she I don't know the Beatles. any of these. I can't, I can't I, The only her. one I know is Yoko Ono. But she broke up the Beatles. Yara Shidi is... Um, you, I thought we said we couldn't look these up. We can't, but I don't know any of them. I just don't want to pick Yoko Ono. Yara Shihi or Shahidi. What, what is she though? Go to Wikipedia. Oh, right. That's a good point. Um, born 2000 is an actress, oh. an activist. Huh. Uh, starring role as the oldest daughter Zoe on the sitcom Blackish. Oh, I've seen. Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do Yara. I don't know her from Blackish, but I know her from Grownish. Okay, fuck it, Yara. I don't know almost any it's, of these. There's Finally. 26 questions. That one's not going to weigh too much. You say that, but we're going to end up getting introvert <laughs> at the end of this. Watch. <laughs> Zendaya, forgot. Zach Efron, Zayn Malik, or Zoe Kravitz? I'll do Zach. I'm also he's, doing Zach. He's sore and he's flying. He's done some funny movies, and I'm not giving Zendaya any more fucking hype. I'm purposely saying know. her name wrong, too. I did I got, like her. In, I got uh, Millennial. I got Gen Xer. Wait, you're younger than me, though, right? Aren't you technically a Gen Xer? No. We're the same age. No, Gen X is the opposite direction. Who's the Who's the picture for Gen X? DiCaprio. That's fair. You watch a lot of fucking movies. I mean, I guess that makes a little more sense. You're I, young, I pick, I fun, picked De Niro. hardworking. Yeah. You don't fully understand what the other kids are into these days, but that's okay with you. You love avocado toast and sparkling water. You could have left that last sentence off, I feel. You could have uh, not added that last sentence. Uh, here's for Gen fun. Xer. You're mature, calm, collected. You prefer music of your youth to whatever they're playing on the radio nowadays. Oh my God, they know me. Also, you have no idea who Charlie DeMello is. Oh my God, they did write this for me. Charlie DeMello. Who's that? She is one of the biggest TikTokers. I was if- I was so sure it was going to be a dude. <laughs> no. Uh, she is a sizable TikToker. She's gained a stupid amount of following. Um, by just doing TikTok dances and stuff, but is she's she like, good? is she like Lele Pons good? She's a legitimate dancer. So while on TikTok she still just does the trendy TikTok dances, she's like a legitimate, classically trained dancer. So she also you, knows how to legitimately dance. Do you like Blink One Eighty Two? I liked. I mean, I wouldn't admit it like willingly. But pu- we're yeah, putting I, you on the record. I liked their music. Yeah, when they, it, when they, they like were they like remade one of their music videos and one of their new songs and. You remember where they ran through the streets naked? Yeah, 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 of course. They remade it for a song, and they put Lele Pons in their spot with a bunch of girls. Oh, man. I mean... And, and it was like they just redid a classic. The song even sounds like it. And do they, then do they, they know? Like, uh, Susan 
the CEO of YouTube also posted a tweet one day where she was like, uh, something about like getting back into it and learning how to make videos herself so that she can feel in tune with the creators on YouTube. And she said she's taking a lesson from Lele Pons. And she's oh, like no. with Lele for the day and they're doing an interview or whatever. And it's like, yeah, she oh, has a no. lot of subscribers, but it's like, are you purposely trying to, nobody respects her as the go-to fucking YouTuber. Why would you also pick a person who didn't start on your platform? Yeah. Have you seen the number of video essays that have come out about her just being like an unbelievable clout monster, by the way? Nerd no. City just put out, not just put out, he, he puts out a video every four months, right? But his most recent yeah. video was a very good expose on the on just how overly competitive and manipulative Lele Pons is. She was friends nice. with that Amanda Kearney girl, this girl? Yeah, I know her. And Amanda was saying, I can't wasn't, spell it. Wasn't, wasn't she Playboy? Probably. I mean, she's hot, so I mean, like, I could see it. But Amanda Kearney's in this interview, and she's talking about how um, every, she used to be good friends with Layla, or they used to hang out all the time for Vine or whatever. And randomly, her Instagram pictures would be getting deleted. And yeah. she, long story short, after confronting Layla upon several times about it, because she's the only person who's like left alone with her phone, Layla goes, yeah, I've been deleting your pictures. Like, That's as, awkward. Once they've been getting a ton of likes and like passing Layla, she's just deleted them and then been like, oh, it must be your Instagram acting weird. And then Amanda like cuts her off and is like, whatever, if you're going to be that crazy about it, we're not going to talk anymore. And they Lele spins this whole story about how it's actually Amanda who's a psychopath and forcing her to do this and that. And Amanda just never addressed it and just let that story run because she didn't want to deal with it. But then, yeah, it's this whole thing, dude. Lele is a psycho, bro. Damn. Speaking of, you know what else is psycho? The fact that we have sponsors. Insert sponsor here, Samet. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are going to take probably the most important quiz um, that there could be in a situation like this, Alex. Yeah, a better podcast would save this for the end. A better podcast would save, would save this for the end, right? Um, we have got what percent compatible are you with your significant other? And we instead are going to turn this into what percent compatible are you with your podcast co-host? Because obviously, what's the point in listening to a podcast with two hosts if they aren't compatible, right? We've got to be, yeah. I mean, we're not going to become the number one podcast overnight if we aren't compatible, Alex, is what I'm saying. No, and I've slept a lot. What? <laughs> overnight. <laughs> ah, right, okay. <laughs> um, uh, wait, so how does this work? Do we both take it or? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I'm confused. I didn't, I didn't look up the rules. This one is, as you answer, new questions appear. Okay, that makes sense, but then... This this one has a higher, uh, I want to say production value <laughs> okay, than you, the other ones. You answer yours. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll answer mine. I, what is the result going to say? Hey, you're 50% compatible with... Aren't we both... You know what it is? You know what I think it is? I think I do it, and then I send it to you, and then you do it, and then we both get the results? I think that might be what it is. Anyway, whatever. Let's let's just go through it. Let, let's try it and see how this goes. It's your last day of vacation and you have different priorities. What? Oh, so it's just asking me questions about my relationship. Like I'm like you don't you're not a part of this at all. I'm answering for you basically. All right. So it's your okay, last. I'll chime in and help out. Well, well, it's your last day of vacation and you have different priorities. What do you do? Won't happen. We planned and budgeted, so we're both happy. They had their way yesterday. Today is your day. Compromise and cut a little time out of both activities to make it work. And it's not the end of the world if you miss your thing or not possible. We love doing the same things. Well, let's talk about this in the context of this podcast, even. Okay. So we go on a vacation and we decide to shoot we, a podcast. We, we definitely didn't plan it. Well, we definitely we're on vacation together. We're not dating. Of course, we planned it. No, I meant this podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. What we talk about, it just happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's the magic of it. But listen, say we go yeah. out to see like a Rainbow Six tournament, right? They have one in Maryland. Yeah. We decide to drive out to Maryland or something, and like there's six hours until the Cloud Nine match, and we decide that we have different priorities, or maybe yeah. we don't have different priorities. What would you want to do on the last day of vacation before we go? Realistically. Let's not say I'm we're really, in, let's say we're in California, like somewhere far. Uh -huh. Yeah. What would you want to do? Uh, I I'm pretty stubborn. I'd probably pick my thing over your thing. 
but what if we have the same thing is, is what I'm trying to weed oh, out damn. here. Like, what if your oh, thing damn. is like, dude, I really want to go to this local arcade and try tacos. And it's like, well, I mean, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that does that's sound the thing like my doing. thing. All right. I get, not possible. We love doing the same things. I feel like that's probably more true than not. Yeah, not possible. All right. Yeah. You just had okay service at a restaurant and your significant other, in this case, podcast host, leaves a mm-hmm. bad tip. How do you react? Oh, I'm pretty upset. I, I minimum 20% it. I typically exactly 20% it. Although I have my qualms about why tipping is even a thing. It, it doesn't, well, it doesn't lead me to not leave. I to have leave the same qualms, but it's a t- thing. So I do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I, I do 20% and I for sure don't go below $5 no matter what. So, um, how do you react? You were a server and you know there are off days. Bring it up at the table so they know it matters to you. Call them out at the table. Don't worry about it. Bring it up in the car. Add a few more bucks after they've left the table. I mean, this is implying that you would make a a, a point of leaving a bad tip, and it sounds like neither one of us would do that. Definitely not. So let's go with the service was mad. It's not that big a deal. That's not the closest answer, though. But the other one is like bring it up at the table make a big fuss out of you have to leave a good tip. All right, let, let's see. Well, what if I left a bad tip? What would you do? I probably wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you've also got the same problems about tips. I'm not going to tell you to spend your money. Is this... Wait, is this... Are we oh, yeah, there, are, I was, are, I was are looking. We, is there even an option? Are we is having there even our first option? couple's fight? This is crazy. <sighs> I'm bringing this up in the car right home. <laughs> okay, let's go with that. Um, <laughs> they have to work late, but y'all show is on. What are you going to do? I don't know how that works. So you and me decide we're going to watch an anime for some reason or like live stream together, but you, I'd but wait. you get caught up at work or whatever. Yeah, some yeah. of us have jobs. Depends on how late I got to know what happens. I'm going to watch it, but rewatch it with them. I would never watch without them. That's the greatest act of betrayal. It depends on the show. I'd shoot them a text to see if they care. If it's me, I'm picking. I would never watch without them. That's it's probably betrayal. I mean, are we are we going with a TV show or are we doing the live stream example? Because I feel like it's not that big a deal to wait an hour, right? I would say I would I would keep this in the the bounds of like say like there's a weekly TV show. Say like I watch Game of Thrones without you when it was good, and we've been watching it together so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, I probably wouldn't watch it without. Yeah yeah okay, wouldn't watch it without them. Um. While looking at your bank account, you realize that your significant other made a big purchase without consulting you. What do you do? I've never had to share a bank account with anybody. I don't know. Yeah, what, I don't know. I never know what two, to do here. These are two grown up questions now. Um, Let's phrase this in the idea that they like literally like say you had like say we're in a world, God forbid, where we all use cash. Right. And they took cash. Wait, I'd be a little. Wait, I'd so, be a little upset. I mean. Well, why are you saying, why are you bringing up cash though? Like, is it? Because I'm saying for us, we've never shared a bank account. Let's say we all dealt in cash. Right. And they just. Well, no, but I mean, you're, I feel like that adds a different variable here. Like if you see. I'm not saying they're stealing. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if, if I see a thousand dollars missing out of the account and it says it was, it was spent at a sex shop, I'd be like, oh, okay. That's a thousand bucks missing. And I know what it went to. Right. I I wish I remember. That was probably a weird question. Um. But if I see a thousand bucks missing, just withdrawn, like my mind would immediately go, okay, drugs. <laughs> or like, why are you not just buying this thing with your credit card? That's what I mean. But the oh, question okay. is more so, what would you do if a bunch of money was missing from an account that maybe you share with somebody? And either way, I think calmly ask them what happened and ask and ask them to return it. Wait, no. I don't like the second half of that one. Yeah. They could have they had a completely viable reason and say there's one dog left and they had to act fast. Yeah. Like you can't just pick up a Shiba Inu without, you know, five grand ready, right? Wait until yeah. the right time to bring it up, I guess. is Probably then. The, the right time, of course, being fairly, fairly soon. Yeah, obviously. Uh, significant other made dinner. Should you do anything in return? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it. Um. Uh, definitely if they cook, I clean, they love to cook. So I let them do it. I don't know, man. This isn't even like an easy thing to relate to a podcast host. When are we cooking for each other? Oh, Korean barbecue. Oh, hell yeah. But we both, you cook. Always... we cook together. It's our favorite way to spend time. Yeah, there you go. There's our answer. Yeah, we did. We did it. Boom. There you Thanks, go. Iron Age. 
You won an argument and you know you're right. How do you handle it? Wait, so the argument's over? And I won, obviously. Send them a funny uh -huh. text. Bask in the glory while you can. You never win arguments. Even if I am right, I know not to say so. Let this day go down in history as the day you were right. I think I literally last podcast brought up a time where I was right and you... No, we did in the stream. Do you have a stream, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Cemento Media. Come watch and get shot in the back of the head while you're doing nothing else during the quarantine. No, I think I brought up a story of the one time I was right <laughs> and I got you. Oh. It was a... Uh, we were talking about what engine uh apex legends runs on oh right and i said it was the source engine and you said it can't be i was like no way it's the source engine they have so much movement because when i'm right i have to dig deep right uh send them a funny text rubbing it in their face i think is the strongest play for us yeah because i mean we, we talk way too frequently to just only be right once in a while this one yeah. i've gotten a hundred things wrong about anime and what have you sunday morning and your significant other wants to sleep in what do you think i mean we don't live together yeah, let them sleep. Uh, I, I, I probably I probably play the Maroon Five song. Is that an option? I don't know the Maroon Five song. They have a song called Sunday Morning. Oh, do they? Yeah. I'm gonna go with Let Them Sleep. You've got stuff you can do around the house. Yeah. Your significant other laughs at a joke that you find offensive. What are you gonna say? This one's applicable. This one's very applicable. What do we do if yeah. we laugh at a joke someone else finds offensive? It's the no internet, one knows Alex. how much no one knows how much he's had to censor me. Um, no, it's not. Have I have I censored you once? I think once. Wait, actually, I can cut this part out. But wait, one of like for the podcast. I think I. I don't oh, think you so. did. You didn't. You didn't. I don't know if I want to re say what I said last podcast. No, but I don't. I don't know if I can say it. Well, maybe I. I, I remember watching it. And you left it in. Wait, mess, me message me what it was. It just, it just <laughs> saved me the trouble. But no, for the okay. for the most part, outside of like personally identifying information and like local landmarks that would let people know where I live. Like, oh yeah, no, not all that stuff. The, no, I would say that. There's not. I've a, only said that in the stream. <laughs> yeah, there's not a ton that I would worry. <laughs> there's not a ton that I would worry about outside of something that might like legitimately get me in trouble with YouTube. I, no, there's not. I'm not doxing people. Right. Um, it's just a joke. I know they. I know them better than to think they agree with it. Yeah, let's go with that. The, the rest of them are confrontational. Yeah. We have a different sense of humor. It's okay. Maybe that's more accurate. Oh, I can't change my answer. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well. God, this production value was not worth it. It's still pretty close. I think we're okay. Uh, they got they, by the way. No, no longer your significant other, just some person. <laughs> they got into a fender bender and the car needs repairs. How do you handle it? This, oh. this doesn't work super well because they're not dating. So wait, so wait, so wait. This other one, we're implying a shared bank account, but now our insurance is different? <laughs> this isn't adding up. Yeah, this is weird. Their accident, their expense, it's not that bad. Just nicks on the bumper, totally drivable. I would chip in. I mean, well, one of these is just don't fix it at all. Which, I mean, if that's an option, like what, what, if it really is just a nick on the bumper, I mean, who actually spends the money to fix that? Nobody. If you're not fixing it on your own, right? To be fair, that literally happened to my car and we didn't do anything. Yeah. Nobody does. Not me and like my family, but me and you, you didn't help at all. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember this. I'm going to go with, it's not that bad. Just a nick on the bumper. Just cause that seems like the least. That's assuming is that is that does that nick just a nick on the bumper apply to the other answers? What do you mean? Like, no, it doesn't. Like, so the, the other one assuming ones, this was this could have been like a bad axe. Like, I, I guess fender bender implies it wasn't. Bad. So this is taking the mentality that it is just a nick on the bumper. Like, even if the engine was falling out, this would be your response. It's not that bad. You can totally drive that. There's no need to even discuss who's going to pay for it because you're not going <laughs> to fix it. That's the that's the mentality with this answer. And yeah, it's okay. Their accident, their expense. We have an accident fund for stuff like this. Or you both chip in, but then both people are on a tighter budget for the next few months. Which, if it's going to be a tight budget for the next few months, that's very different than Nick on the bumper totally drivable. Well, I mean, everything. Bumpers are not cheap. Yeah, but I mean, you could. Noth you nothing could, on the car is cheap. You could destroy a bumper and it would still be drivable, though, is my point. Yeah. All right, so what are we going with here? I mean, 
I guess none of this feels I'll go real. For the first one. I'll go for the first one. All right. Not that bad. Nick on the bumper, totally drivable. You love a nice, cool room, but your significant other likes a toasty. What now? My actual I, answer for my actual girlfriend is this first one. That's dumb. You can get blankets. That's actually my response, but I never win that argument. <laughs> I don't get why people... Like, what am I supposed to do to get cooler? I can't get more naked than the shirtless I am naturally, right? But you can easily yeah. become more warm with the abundance of blankets on the bed. How is like this even a question? Of, I, I love the feel of a cold room with blankets. Yeah. It, it's it's nice. I, I wasn't always like that, I think. My roommate, my freshman year of college, kept the room around 50 degrees at all times that's fucking cold dude because he he's he sweat like you would not believe i believe it i'm one he of wasn't those a guys. big dude he was he was super buff like weightlifter right but this dude just ran hot that's how <laughs> he was like be. my pc and he just every like we would turn it up when he left the room the moment he came in the room didn't even ask crank that thing as low as it can go <laughs> Did you guys pay for heating? Was it a big bill or? No, no, it was a uh, it was a dorm, so yeah. none of us paid for anything. Makes sense. Yeah, I guess try and find a temperature you can agree on, or ever... play it by ear if someone can't sleep. I guess try and find a temperature you can agree on, right? Yeah, if I'm being if I'm being nice probably the closest thing you just had a big fight how do you resolve it what happens when we get into a fight alex how do we resolve it? uh uh we usually bang uh wait for them to cool down and say they're sorry try to talk it out you don't like to drag out fights how is this not an option get, i don't know man they don't know us i'm gonna go with try and talk it out they probably mean try and bang it out but they didn't they misspelled yeah. it is what it yeah. is we'll put heavy air quotes air that's the, th that's the that's the thumbnail bang it out um are there certain things that are okay to keep from your significant other well i can't say well what <laughs> what do you think in the context of the podcast is there anything that you do you have do we have podcast secrets are we not really i mean i feel like once you've shared your preference regarding potatoes with someone you know them as well as you're going to that's very true uh, a little secret isn't the end of the world. Absolutely not. Transparency. Ah, depends on the thing. Yeah. I would prefer to always be honest. That seems like a general good guy vibe. Yeah. Let's go with R that. Slash, let's start slash nice guy. R slash nice guy. Bro, I need to know how many more questions are in this dumb shit. I didn't, I didn't pre-scout this. What would, your sig <laughs> yeah. what would your significant other say when they see your 401k? What? Whoa, you're only putting uh -huh. in that much? This is going to pay off when you retire by the beach. I hate all of this. Okay, real. I don't know if we can talk about this. Do you have one, by the way? I think my company offers one, but I've never put money into a 401k. I I, I did once. Once? For one job. One job just automatically started doing it. I didn't ask. They didn't ask. Oh, they probably asked, and I just said yes. How long did you work at that job, slash how long were you putting money into that 401k? Like a year? More years? A, su a summer. Oh, it so was how, an internship. So how does that work out? Do you get that money back? Is it impossible to get that money back? Do you have to reach? No, nah, they, 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 they paid it out. Oh, yeah. So solid. Whatever. Yeah, um, it was my money and I needed it now. <laughs> JG Wentworth 877 cash now. Oh, God, I know the number. Nothing Everyone too surprising. We carefully coordinate ours. Nope. This well, is going to pay off when we retire so. by the beach. Let's go with that one. Retire by the okay. beach. That sounds fancy. You had a work no party. Our, no one our generation is retiring. Yeah, what's a 401k? You're telling me a 401 made this K? Get out of here. <laughs> you had a work party and don't know anyone. What are they doing? Well, we work together. So how did, what? <sighs> Pointing out um, people to you from the corner. Not sure. They showed you the food and disappeared. That's the answer. Hell yeah. That's the answer. You open a joint savings account. What was its purpose? And probably get a cyber truck, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think cyber truck most uh, translation into a house. Yeah, a nice new house. Oh, boom! Ninety five percent. Hell yeah, bro! You and your significant other are definitely soulmates, even though you may not always agree on everything. You know how to balance and celebrate each other's differences. You know how to both live in harmony, and that's truly a beautiful thing, dude. We're ninety-five percent compatible. 
I knew I picked the right YouTube channel to leech off of. No fucking way does any other podcast get a higher compatibility score than that. Bullshit. Put Joe Rogan and Jamie on this. No fucking way was, they get a higher score. I was about to list that. They'd get nothing. Jenna and Julian, fuck out of here. I don't care how long you've been together. You're not getting 95%. They might. They actually have their like finances and stuff intertwined. I think so. Maybe they would. Yeah. You, you get together four dogs and uh, you start to be able to read minds. You know. Very true. All right. Let's take a. Uh, uh, let's take a quick break from. Uh, from the BuzzFeed articles and just have a. I, I we had this brought up, on the last podcast we did a good amount of talking about, um, our history with our first computers as well as uh, playing Counter-Strike, which for me was one of my first PC gaming experiences, but I thought it might be nice to jump into that, see what it's like. So um, what was your first gaming experience? I'm assuming it was a console, but... It was, yeah. What was your um, first What was your first gaming experience? Uh, my dad bought me a PS2 for personal experience, not for going to anyone's houses, like anyone's house to play or my cousin's house. My dad got me a PS2, uh, a bunch of sports games for some reason, even though I didn't ask for them. <laughs> like I'll play, I'll play FIFA now, obviously, but like he bought me like FIFA '98 and nah. like and old, like some NBA games, which I had school, no interest in. Old school NBA games were just the fucking worst, bro. But you want you want to know something super like, like not like cringy, like super cringy, but just like hard to like bring up. Go, but, go, 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 yeah. I re- I liked playing Mario at like my cousin's house, right. so I sent my mo- I went with my mom to Best Buy, and went up to the uh, like the Best Buy salesperson and asked, "How can I get a Mario game on my PlayStation 2? Oh no! <laughs> and this poor guy had to explain it to me, oh. and I looked at and I just looked at my mom and I only remember thinking was like, "Don't say I don't want the PS2 anymore." <laughs> Why didn't you get me a GameCube? Oh man, that's tough, man. I've got a yeah. I've got a green text for you. Oh yes. I've got a green text for you, Alex. Okay. Oh. Some friends are having a birthday for one of their younger brothers. They have a GameCube permanently turned on with pretty much everything unlocked in Super Smash Bros. because they don't have a memory card because they were a bit poor. I get him a memory card as a present. When no one's watching, save the smash data. Little later, nonchalantly ask, what's up with the GameCube? My hand is on the power button. Friend and his little brother freak out as I turn it off. Smallest one starts crying. Just kidding, happy birthday. Plug in the memory card and turn it back on. Save file corrupted. Oh, (laughs) no! I can't read this without freaking out, dude. Oh, that's, I feel bad. That's bad. <laughs> that's real bad. But I can relate to this so hard. Same. Did you use memory cards? I So my first console wasn't a PS2. It was technically a Game Boy Advance followed by a Super Nintendo. Maybe the other way around. I don't remember. It's the other way around. But go on. But my first real generation console was a, was a PS2 after an SNES. And yeah, I was in this exact situation. I had a PS2. But then maybe three months, four months before I had a memory card. So the number of times that I have played the first three hours of SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom is ungodly. That's, that's, a, throw, that's a throwback. Is ungodly, bro. I would go as far as I could. I'd try and leave it on overnight, and I'd wake up and the system overheated and died or whatever. It couldn't be done. Mine Every never, single day. Mine be, never overheated. Mine, I could keep mine on for weeks. That's the fucking play, man. That's I a had, superpower uh, as far as PlayStations are concerned. I had Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. Where right. I unlocked every character, did every mission. No memory and card? It, no memory card. I backed out to the menu, lost everything. No. How long did that take you? Um, Probably like a week. That's a lot of playtime. A week yeah, back was. when you were young and had that much free time? That's a lot of playtime, dude. Yeah. I still have that kind of free time, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember, I remember venting to a neighborhood buddy of mine um, that I didn't have a memory card and it sucked. And he had a PlayStation Two and he had two memory cards, but he had different game saves on each one. One of them was full, basically, so he couldn't yeah. spare one. Um, but then one day he comes in and he just tosses me a memory card in in one of our classes, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" And I get home and I plug it in, but it's a PlayStation One memory card. 
Ooh. Which, if you don't know the difference, they work. But the PlayStation 1 has like 8 kilobytes of data. And a PlayStation 2 typically comes with like 8 megabytes of data. So a little different. even a single PlayStation 2 game, I could not save onto that thing. There wasn't enough free space. But I yeah. could save PlayStation 1 games onto that memory card on my PlayStation 2. Because they were much smaller, obviously. So I'd be playing Digimon whatever the fuck dungeon. Ugh, God, I don't even want to think about it, man. The Budokai 1, though. Played, yeah. played the fuck out of that. I never had a memory card, and then I got one. What was that and like? I st- and I still didn't use it. What, why? What? Why? I was just so used to playing a game in its entirety, basically, <laughs> and never going back to the menu. Oh. That what? Then afterwards, I'm like, what do I want to save? I'm done. That's a Chad fucking play, man. Because like I never, it never overheated, it never turned off. No, I get. What? Whoa, whoa, wait. So you don't mean a one sitting? No, I mean like I could keep it on for weeks to you'd, the point where you play a game play until you weren't done playing it, right? And then you just pause, yeah. change it to a different channel. Oh fuck! You change change inputs. Yeah, whatever. I don't know yeah. how old this is. Yeah, and then Very. just come back to it and be like, all right, picking up where I left off. Yep. That is well, interesting. I, I had a TV in my room, but it only had a PlayStation hooked up to it, nothing else. So if I was, I would just leave the room. So my first console was actually an SNES. Yeah, I wasn't cool enough for one of those. Super Nintendo. And I played the fuck out of, I could have sworn it'd be right there, but it's uh, Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. I didn't spell any of that right. Yeah, Super Mario World 2. Played the fuck, you guys know this game now. Yeah, Everybody. It's also on the uh, throwback console that they put out. Yeah, everybody knows this game now because Trihex and a number of other people speed run the fuck out of Yoshi's Island. But this game came out in 1995. I think I got myself a console and this game sometime in the early 2000s, for sure. I was hella young. And I feel like I bought this at like a CVS or something. Like it was like, like, like a store you way wouldn't buy a game console. Oh, I have a weirder story, actually. Um, yeah? My favorite Mario game is Super Mario Bros. 2, which if you know Donkey's like yearly uh, favorite, like uh, top games of the year, he always picks Super Mario Bros. 2. Right. Uh, it's because it's it's not a regular Mario game. It was like it was initially a different game, and they reskinned it to be Mario. Oh, this like, is the one where you could pull out potions and shit out of the ground and stuff, right? Yeah, and like it had a more vertical aspect as opposed to the original, like left right. Well, yeah. No, this I, game was weird. Yeah. I found it in the trash can at the park at school. Oh, Br- I've got I've got stories of pulling shit out of the trash, bro. Brought it home, it worked. Became my favorite Mario game. Yeah, I mean this game had some fucking levels to it though. Oh yeah, it was so fun. There's like characters they never brought back. Like do you remember Mauser? No. It's spelled like Bowser but with an M. He threw bombs at you. Oh it Th- that second picture, I remember that that area. Oh yeah, of course. Do you remember fighting Birdia where you had to land on the eggs that yeah. she shot out, pick them up, and throw them back? No, but then um, Birdio, what was it? Something about being transgendered? I don't know about that. <laughs> Birdio, transgender. Oh, I probably shouldn't image search that. Um, Birdo, Wikipedia? Birdo, known Japanese as Catherine, fictional character Whoa. in the Mario franchise, Doki Doki Panic, which is Super Mario Bros. 2. That was the original game before they reskinned it to be Mario. Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic? It was like an it was like a, an Arabic themed game. That's why there's so many sand levels. Oh, that's spicy. There was um That's why Mario has sand levels. Here you go. That. Here it is. The English manual for Super Mario Bros. 2 refers to Birdo as a character who thinks he is a girl. Oh. who would rather be referred to as Birdetta. Later releases of Super Mario Bros. 2 remove this mention of her new name. Yeah, hmm. there was this whole thing where I was like, wait a second. I mean, it's clearly it. She's clearly a girl. But the, the, manual, the, manual, the manual threw that part in that said he thinks is a girl. And there was this it whole prob- thing. It, it probably has something to do with the Doki Doki. Yeah, like- I'm, sure, I'm sure it's, yeah. Since this is the first 
game that Birdo is a character, it's got to be some leftover remnant of uh, the previous game, I think. Yeah. But no, the thing that got me was, um, what is it, Super Mario Bros. 2? Yeah. NES, can I just type in the word spooky? Will that pull up what I'm thinking of? The fucking, these fuckers. Oh, yeah. These guys, I don't get why. I guess just because back then, like, we didn't have guides readily available, so I didn't really know how to beat levels in Super Mario. So they had oh, yeah. these weird metallic-faced ghost dudes who would just be floating around, and they were fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the premise was always you have to pick up a key to open up a door that's probably nowhere near you. And when you're holding exactly. the key, you can't pick up other items to throw and get rid of enemies. You just got a platform. Mm -hmm. So it's like tying your hands behind your back while these creepy fucking dudes chase you. The music changes. Like, all this shit, man. Yeah. This was before you could actually look up what the hell was happening. Yeah. You just, you just sort of had to assume. This was real gaming. No, you just sort of had to assume what to do. I mean, there's. I think we could do a whole podcast on annoying things in old games, and you had no internet to help you. Oh God, you want to hear? I was about to tell the story anyway, but on the Game Boy Advance, Dexter's Laboratory. This video game, Disaster Strikes. That's it. Disaster Strikes. I didn't spell that right. So, I had a I had a Game Boy Advance, right? Much the mm -hmm. same though, I did not have a ton of games for it. I didn't have any Pokemon games for a while, which looking back, why did I even have a Game Boy Advance, right? Exactly. No video game. It's like, it's like people who have a Switch, but they don't have Breath of the Wild. Yeah, no video game is gonna give you the replayability, or the playability even, not even replayability, the playability of a Pokemon game. While, the, while all the creatures are arbitrary, you're not gonna spend as many hours collecting Pokemon and getting them leveled up or doing anything else as much as you would collecting Pokemon and getting them leveled what up. What was right? the first Pokemon they drew? Uh, I think it was Charmander, right? Right on. A. He's so the most generic. This is Dexter's Laboratory Disaster Strikes. This was a game on the Game Boy Advance and the premise is that Dee Dee has come into Dexter's Laboratory and has made a bunch of robots or a million clones of herself. I don't remember what it is. But it's one of these games where you get five lives and there's like a, you know, maybe a four or five hour story. And if you lose your lives, the game, it's over. You mm -hmm. go to the menu, you press start, you start over again. Yeah. Right. And if you lose the duel, you lose your soul. Yeah. And I don't know why, but this game wasn't easy. There was, it's like 2D platforming. No, 3D platforming? 3D platforming. It, it's like the 2.5D platforming. It's isometric, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, isometric. There you go. And it's... There's robots, and each robot needs a different little gadget to open, and there's doors that have color cards that you need to pick up before you can open the doors. So, like, this game was just an absolute nightmare when you didn't have a guide. You really just had to be running from place to place. There's a YouTuber I watch, uh, Ryukar. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of him. He also has Mario stuff, but he did a series called, like, Extraordinary Hard Games, and it was, right. like, super interesting to watch because he went back to, like, NES titles for, like, those hard-ass games. Right. And it's, like... So many I never played that I want to go back and try. Yeah. Same vein. I mean, where old games were impossible. I mean, back then, like, they didn't need to be, like, they were going to sell no matter what because 50% of games were Pokemon. 45% yeah. of games were titles like this that had to do with, uh, you know, like first party movies and TV shows that they were making a game based on. A, a recognizable IP. Right. And then Mega Man. Like that's it. So Don't you, forget Sonic. Whatever. Um, no, it's it's the three categories. Fast it's, Mega Man. It's, po yeah. it's Pokemon. It's recognizable IPs and whatever Sega was doing. Right. And it's like there weren't that many games, and there was literally one mobile console. Right. Yes. So it didn't matter what was coming out. People were going to buy the thing if you slapped the right thing, whether Pokemon, uh, Sonichu, or Dexter's Laboratory on front of it. Right. They're yeah. going to buy the thing. So who gives a fuck if the game actually plays, right? No one. You're not going to outsell Pokemon. The fact that you sell any at all is all that, you know, your fucking funding is looking for. Yeah. I hated this fucking if I didn't make that clear. <laughs> so the other struggle I had, I had such a sad childhood. The other struggle I had was I never had a Pokemon game until um, one of my, uh, like, like, mom's friend's kids gave me a, a Pokemon game, right? Guess what uh -huh. Pokemon game it was? It was probably Pearl. So it was Pokemon Green. Uh, okay. 
Pokemon Green, right? This guy. So I, I was I was banking that you were gonna be a, it was gonna be super late. Oh, you cut out there. It was gonna be what? I was banking on that it was gonna be a super late. Like, no, 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 no. It was Pokemon Green, right? <laughs> this cartridge, right? Yeah. In Japanese. Because the text was faster for your speed runs. <laughs> no, because <laughs> I don't know how we got a Japanese game cartridge. But well, I don't know if you, I don't know if you how into Pokemon we are you are but like well it was it tough to be... to be into pokemon when i couldn't read the fucking game no no no, no. pokemon used to come out in japan six months before in in the americas oh right sure so if you wanted to play the game the new game you, you gotta had to get the japanese. japanese one oh maybe he was just a really big pokemon fan he probably was super into it yeah and then he got the english one he didn't need it anymore oh that i mean that fits the narrative perfectly I unfortunately i was neither japanese nor that big of a pokemon fan so I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I mean, yeah. I was struggling to get through the beginning menus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't know what to do. When Professor Oak tells you to pick a Pokemon, I didn't know what to do. I was like, wait, we're out of text boxes. What do I do in this room now? <laughs> uh, all right, I guess I don't play this anymore. Back to Dexter's Laboratory. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sucked. Who'd you pick? I don't fucking remember. I mean, <sighs> I, I didn't know. Once this I most, actually got uh, this to, is the most unsatisfying story now. You, you have to understand, I didn't even know what Pokemon was. I didn't understand the premise. Like, looking at it now, I could probably play it in Japanese. Because I A, I know the menus, and B, I understand the premise. To be fair, I don't know how recently you played a Pokemon game. I basically am playing in Japanese because I don't read a thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just keep walking forward and the game completes itself. I had the special edition Pikachu Pokemon game. Pokemon Yellow? Yeah, Pokemon Yellow. Special edition. It's just yeah, Pokemon. special Pikachu edition, it said, because, yeah, here it is. This guy. This was cool. This was the first Pokemon game, if I'm not mistaken, that had Pikachu running around behind you. And you yeah. could check up on him and be like, how you doing, buddy? And this was my first English Pokemon game. This one think followed the show more, where you could get, yeah. It was real Team Rocket and stuff, right? And then, like, you could get, like, certain... Po you could get all three of the starters, like, Ash did and stuff, yeah. Right. This was cool. I don't think I ever actually owned this guy. I think a buddy of mine let me borrow his, and I just perpetually always had it in the house. And I tried to play it, but I don't know. I was never the type of dude to stay up all night and get something. Like, I had friends who would, like, get a Pokemon game one day and have a level 99 the next day. I was... I The first Pokemon game I got was Fire Red. Right. And I sat down... I, it was it was Christmas and I got a gaming chair, but like one of those cool ones where the speakers in the chair. Ooh! And I didn't plug my Game Boy into it. Obviously, I just sat in that chair for twelve hours straight playing Fire Red. Damn! And I was so happy. <laughs> I'll never get back to that peak. I don't. I don't know if I've ever sat and played any game for that long that wasn't a multiplayer game on the PC. It was just mind blowing to me. It like blew my mind. I was like, "This is the best thing ever." I don't know if I've the the first time I had that moment. Maybe there were two first times. Well, well, let's. The first time I had that sort of gaming moment, I was young, obviously, but it was Sly Cooper Three. Still one yeah. of my favorite games to date. I love the fuck out of this game. I will be sure to play it from front to back on stream. Oh, either when I figure out where I left my PS2 or once I get an emulator running. But I, I got a PS2 you can use. This game, thank you. This game had so many levels. Yeah. You see in this? That's not Sly 3. That's a newer Sly game. What? Sly Cooper 3? I'm searching the right thing. Sly Cooper 3. So what do we have? We have France, right? The first level is mm -hmm. in France. Right, you've got the French streets. These are all terrible pictures. But Sly, got, Coup Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper. You've got these French streets. You've got uh, you've got French um, buildings. You've got opera houses. You've got all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's um, is it Italy? Is that why I'm not getting the right? Oh. oh, it's Italy. It's Italy. It has to be Italy. That's why. So they've got opera houses and they've got environmental enemies and everybody's very italian here's the whole layout of the place and they have canals of course it's italy they have canals and boats that you can jump on and i was like this game's fucking wild like the amount of detail in this game is crazy and you don't realize it's or i didn't realize that it's the first of six levels 
<laughs> yeah. Right? So after Italy, you go to Australia, and then there's a whole different Australian level where they have outback and they have bouncy things and they have drillers and miners and it's a whole different level. And then yeah. af- and then after Australia, um might not be after Australia, but they have China. And you have dragons in the air and you're up in the air with dragons and you're shooting off fireworks and then they have Holland. Where you're, the whole thing is they have a they have an airplane competition with two teams and you have to sneak into their base and sabotage their planes and do all this shit for this grand story of trying to get back a team to crack this high. So good, bro. Yeah. So good, bro. I would play. I have played this game like a couple years ago. This shit's excellent. But what, right, was, what the, was a what was your first like like raid M game? Like how old were you when you got one? Because that was a big deal. It's no longer. I don't think it's no one. It's a big deal to no one nowadays. Yeah, because you can get. I mean, porn exists, and you can also get whatever rated M game you want. But on like your my PC. my mom would see like teen. No way. You're not really? That. Oh yeah, my parents were strict about it. Were yours? Um. I mean, the thing. My so a my parents never really bought anything. Oh. So a lot of my acquisitions past them buying me the console for my birthday or whatever would typically be me borrowing the games from my friends or whatever. But my mom can't really speak English, still can't really speak English. Mm-hmm. So unless the store worker was a dick and decided to go out of his way to like meticulously explain that this game's got sexual or violence or whatever in it, it wasn't a big deal. But I was also one of those kids that was like, oh, this is rated M. I can't buy this. Let me move on. Uh, I would try. What I game would... would you try and buy though? Well, first of all, my uncle just gave me just brought over ghost recon right and just my mom's like that's right and he's like so and that hmm. was the end of it and i was allowed to play it what an uncle yeah it was it was literally awful we'd play what does that just play him one on one right I, it worked for nothing else after but then i, I found out there's ghost recon 2 right and i was like holy crap yeah so the old cousin, tom clancy my, games was pretty mind-blowing with what they my cousin do. my cousin took me to get the second one and he sees it's rate m and he's like you're not getting this and i was like why well, i have the first one and i even think i think ghost recon 2 is a lower rating than the ghost recon 1 yeah maybe like, like it was teen and ghost recon 1 was m yeah and he's like no so i had to get the over the hedge playstation game <laughs> what a step down holy shit look, look, bring it up because no one knows what i'm talking about over the hedge uh playstation 2 oh no oh wait it looks pretty good it looks like the movie it yeah this was back in the day where every game every movie had a game every yeah movie games were issues back then man because there were so many of them i would say that for uh, for a movie game this is probably more well this is well made it's not it's not g-force good but you know (laughs) the uh, the pinnacle of um ip games i think actually was spongebob battle for bikini bottom that i think is, spongebob there's two good spongebob ones if i remember they also have um <laughs> i was about to say spongebob up your arsenal no that's a different franchise <laughs> um spongebob had Sp- another game i forget what it was look up look up spongebob playstation 2 there's it'll come up i'm i'm hopeful God, I, I, didn't, I didn't type in any of that right. Oh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Wait, what? No, go. Nickelodeon SpongeBob Atlantis SquarePants. I've never go, even heard of that. Go to the top though. It's the one with Patrick and him running forward. I thought. Yeah, it's the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game. That's that was my favorite. Really? That one was good. Have oh, you yeah, played Battle for Bikini Bottom? I did. I liked the other one better. I I don't think I played the other one, so I can't actually. The other it. one was like Mario Galaxy, uh, not Mario. Uh, it was like Super Mario sixty four. Oh really? Where, like, you had to like collect stars and get power ups and stuff. I don't remember what they were called. They weren't called stars, but like you had to beat levels and get certain achievements in each level. Right. It's it it was very it's very well made. It had platforming like Mario, but it was on the PlayStation. Yeah, they have a lot. This definitely isn't it. Yeah, that is on the all in one console that you could get. That's hilarious, bro. That's it. There's the there's the level where he's in the uh what's it called? The goofy goober place or whatever, and he's drunk. Oh, right, right, right. Because he has all that ice cream, right? Yep. Yeah. This was wild, dude. 
This, well, no, this, I'm being really stupid. This obviously isn't the best. The, the, the highest rated, the most respected game that's based off a TV show or a movie is going to be The Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh, yeah. It spawned a whole game. What? It, GTA was based off of it. Really? Yeah. No, that's the other way around. You're joking. I'm being stupid. This, this came out first. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, GTA came out on the PlayStation 1, though, as a top-down scroller. I know, but, like, the modern... Like, the what you think of as modern GTA was based off of this. I don't think that's true. I feel like I've specifically read... Maybe it'll be in this first thing that... Contro- control F GTA. Or grand... Yeah, here you go. Hit and Run's par- parad paradical take on the grand theft auto 3 game yeah this is the sentence i'm thinking of look hit up grand theft auto 3 hit it wait when did it come out well i mean this was made after obviously if it's parodying it 2001 okay. but the the simpsons was designed to be a uh g-rated e-rated grand theft auto you could go around a big city get into hijinks but no guns no blood and still give you that feeling of racing and, and this big city and unlocking stuff. It, it, so the, the, uh, the opposite is true of what you said. I don't know if you were okay. joking or not because of that. But Hit and no, Run was, was very strong. much based on Grand Theft Auto. But holy shit. This, talk about a game, huh? Yeah. Talk about a game. Gra- uh, Simpsons Hit and Run had so many levels. It, so many characters. Almost every character had its original voice actor. Yeah, almost that's rare. everyone. Very rare for a video game. Movie. That never fucking happened. Other way dude. around, but yeah. What? I just said video game movie. It's a it's a movie video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Almost every fucking one. And that's I think I remember the only person in this game that didn't have the original voice actors like really obvious too. It's like it's Mr. Always, it's it's, it's it, always obvious. Yeah, it's Mr. Burns or something. Somebody's way off. But everybody else is spot on, man. God, this game. Think about the replayability of this shit, man. I used to play the fuck out of... Not only did I used to play the shit out of this game, but, again, the internet did not exist in elementary school. So I would go to my buddy who had memorized all the cheat codes at school. And I'd be like, hey, yeah. man, what's the cheat code for being able to jump your car again? And he had it on GameCube. So he had to remember the cheat code in GameCube, translate it to PlayStation it. controls, and then tell yep. me. And what then I would... I would have to, I never thought to write it down. So I would just remember one cheat code, get home, pop it in and be like, hell yeah, I know this cheat code now. <laughs> but then I'd be like, oh, what's the one for invincible cars? Or what's the one did, for losing all your, oh, it was a whole fucking thing, bro. Did you ever uh, at the like Scholastics book fair buy the cheat code book they always had? No. They had I, books I, full of cheat codes for various games. I always bought the book that was full of jokes. Oh. If I was going to buy anything, it'd be the, oh, thousand and one jokes, dude. I'm going to be the funniest fucking kid. I'm glad they put that jokes on one. you, Samet. You're not funny at all now. You I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but we all knew it. Yeah. If they didn't put that extra one joke, it wouldn't be worth making the book. Yeah, exactly. Everybody knows prime numbers are really where it's at. Yeah. That's why Amazon's so popular. <laughs> Amazon prime numbers. What was your favorite level in Simpsons Hit and Run? I don't remember the levels, bro. I'm not that nerdy. What? You haven't played this recently? I have not, no. Oh. Uh, maybe it's not worth showing. They have, yeah. um... What? You don't remember the levels? You don't remember the characters? There were really only five levels, and they were all very different. I really don't, if I'm being... I hate uh, to... I, I would love to lie to you for the podcast. What, okay, what was your go-to game on the PlayStation 2, then? I feel like either Hit and Run and Sly Cooper were definitely mine. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, that's a good fucking choice. You guys remember Star Wars Battlefront 2? You're going to get the new one, but yeah. Make, oh, make, say, say PS2. They had this released on Steam, and I bought it, and I couldn't get into a multiplayer game. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and then I Googled it afterwards, and they were like, yeah, man, the server stopped being supported for this a while ago. What was, but guys, do, you remember, do you remember Galactic Conquest? Yeah, man. That was my game mode, because it was, it was basically like, if you never play it, it was like, kind of like Risk. But like yeah. with the Star Wars universe where you could pick different sides and like have battles in space on planets. It was oh, great. I thought you picked a side and then you like played through like the, the, the story of Star Wars. No, you could like literally 
me and my cousin would play each other and he would pick one side i'd pick the other and we'd have like we'd move our ships around taking over different galaxies and stuff and fighting oh, each other i do remember doing that bro this game this game if, is wild if we're I talking mean, about any like old games you can assume i start out not following the story mode i just did my own thing yeah to, to the extent much, it would let me i'm very much the opposite like side missions make me feel like i'm wasting my time and it, that's a bad thing in most video games because they typically will put a lot of work into the side missions and almost expect you to do a bunch of them before you move on with the main story. Yeah. But I always feel like, I mean, dude, like my kid's been kidnapped. Like, I'm not going to help you find your glasses. Like, no, man, they got shit going on. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have me who I got, I did every temple in Breath of the Wild before I even looked at Ganon. <laughs> yeah. There's two types of people in the world. Yeah. They have um, Star Wars Battlefront 2. This was definitely a game that blew my mind because the size of the maps, how many people were on screen shooting each other, chasing after you. You had you had teammates sometimes. You'd have the fucking Ewoks on your t- on your side. Big tanks and stuff. I mean, this was... There's some games for every console where the concept for the game is limited by the console yeah. of the time, and this is definitely one of them. Yeah. Because what you look at as like the Battlefront game or the, the Battlefield games now, this was trying to be that. Yeah. Very much Battlefield, yeah vehicles air assaults different weapons different classes oh man i mean there is something satisfying and the the battles progress in waves like battlefield yeah like there's phases to the battle yeah you don't get the real big heavy dudes until later and then you unlock fucking heroes and shit right or the bigger droids and stuff i'd always pick garrison so like whenever my cousin was about to win i'd throw in a garrison and outnumber him it was great that seems like a dick move well, yeah, he he always picked the he always wanted to be like Yoda, so he'd pick like the hero oh, play, sure. and I would pick you know the long term strat. Right, right, right. Um, what was what was your next console after a PS2? What was your third gen console? Um, it was uh, this actually ties in because I actually just rebought a Wii. It was a Wii. Oh, nice. And I just rebought it because I had a bunch of games that I wanted to play, and I, my Wii broke and you know we're at home all day so i thought i'd just grab one for like 100 bucks yeah that's actually specifically why i bought animal crossing because i was like this seems like a good thing to throw time into but i bought it so that i could replay super mario galaxy oh i haven't actually played i think any of the 3d mario games i have a nintendo switch now so i totally have, could so wait you haven't played odyssey no did you play 64 no no, no no you don't understand yeah i haven't played 64 dude because i went from a super nintendo uh while the nintendo 64 was out right oh so it, that jump didn't make the two three hundred dollar cents to my parents or whatever mm-hmm. and then the playstation one came out didn't get that and then i got a playstation 2 in like 2005 or something if that translates okay um and then my next console was an xbox 360 because i specifically wanted to play zombies and halo Makes sense. that's not Makes true sense. and halo i had a special edition halo reach edition xbox 360 it made the energy sword sound when he started it on i was like hell yeah this is definitely worth 500 dollars." everyone went to your house after school i assume my mom didn't let anybody over so no no and i didn't have live. no that's not true i had live at that point but this is like junior year of high school i think that i got that xbox for myself no but i can't i can't believe you haven't played any of the 3d mario games none of them not Super Mario World, not Super Mario World 2, not Super Mario Galaxy, not Super Mario Odyssey, not Super Mario 64. What is the most Sun- recent... Sunshine? Nope. Oh, no, no. I have had my hands on Sunshine at a buddy's house. Okay. And I have played... That's... Oh, this is not completely... I've played a bit of Sunshine on an emulator on my PC, but the textures got that's real bad, so I stopped about an hour in. But, yeah. Sunshine looked like a lot of fun. It was. What is the most recent Super Mario game? And does it have Mario Odyssey. Maker in it? Or is that its own game? Mario Maker is its own game. Uh, it's where you can make your own 2D levels. Right. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it I w- depends on what you're looking for. Because you can find some of the hardest platforming in the world on that game. Yeah, I've seen some ridiculous ass levels. I play uh, Logic Makes Levels, the rapper. I like playing his. Oh, really? <laughs> like, It's pretty funny. Are They're they black cool. and white? Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> and they only bring up being biracial every other line instead of every line. 
Oh, he definitely had somebody working with him then. That clearly isn't just logic. I'm just joking. It's totally, if you play them, they're totally just him making it. They're all like, they're decent. If you look at the hot garbage that is that game. Right. Because most levels are either someone trying to be a troll level or the hardest thing in the world or both. I mean, I've seen, I watch Witwix on Twitch a lot and I've seen him play the fuck out of some Mario Maker, like for an entire stream play mario maker yeah, yeah it looks like they have like a challenge where you try and do i don't know how many levels it is but you only get 100 lives and the challenge is to go through that many levels with that many lives that was mario maker one and ah. it was like it was 100 lives challenge and you went through eight levels and there were eight random like eight. user generated levels so the game after letting so many people play it it would classify each level by like easy, medium, hard, and or expert or super expert. That's what I figured. Yeah. And people would do super expert, and then the challenge that you self-impose would be super expert, no skip. So you couldn't skip a level. You had to play every level you were given. Right. Because you had unlimited skips if you were trying to actually like struggle for it. But people who get better at it just do no skip. Right. But there's some levels where like you have to hit like f- like eight or ten frame perfect inputs in a row to beat the level that's the only way yeah so so 100 lives it's not happening right right but there were people who made like masterpieces on that game yeah i mean i don't know if i appreciate mario platforming enough to be able to play this game for an extensive period of time i think if i was going to get a mario game it would make more sense for me to pick up like super mario galaxy is the latest one odyssey is the latest Uh, odyssey is the latest one odyssey uh, Odyssey that, has some great categories for speedrunning. Yeah, up, I don't know. If, look up, look up uh, Mario Odyssey nipple percent. The, Mario Odyssey nipple percent speedrun world record. Where are we at? 11 minutes, 14 seconds. Oh. So this is rushing to a beach level. It's rushing to the sand world and changing your outfit to be Mario in a bathing suit. Right, because there was this whole meme about, uh, what was it, Link being dummy thick and Mario showing his nipples, and it was like, oh, Nintendo's got a strategy for 2019. Yep. So this was a category. You have to get a thousand coins to be able to pay for it. To so, pay to see Mario's nipple? Because you have to pay for the suit, so that someone had to create a route that would get enough coins to be able to buy the suit. This is intense. It's a real category. Yeah, I mean, let's, how do I full game leaderboard? Wow, there's a lot. Oh, wait, there's a wait. Oh, wait, nipple percent. Hint art, no hint art. What? (laughs) Wait, view rules. Here we go. Uh, Go to a shop and buy the boxer shorts outfit. Time begins when selecting start on a new file and ends when you select buy. Hidden Luigi's from hint art are allowed in the hint art subcategory use of amiibo 2p and assist motor band all runs require video proof hidden luigi's from hint art i, I play this game and i don't remember what that is i mean i'm sure i could pull it up by looking at this thing and seeing where we grab a hidden luigi i'm guessing in the hint art it uh gives you like extra coins or something that's got to be what it is probably it's small ant if you can you control f and see if small ant was on that board uh, I will in just a second. Let me see if I can quickly find. I guess I'm not even going to know what a hidden Luigi is. Yeah, small ant. Small. S M A L L. Not on the hint category. Pikachu! <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, nope. There's nobody named Small unless he spells it with one L. Nope. Unfortunately not. Yeah, I guess not. Looks like your uh, favorite speedrunner has been bodied, unfortunately. Uh, I just remember he's the one who introduced me to the category. That makes sense. Um, cool. Okay, so quickly, so we're right at about the two-hour mark. So uh, last quick thing we'll touch on. Uh, what was uh, your first PC game? What was your favorite PC game? And what game do you think you've spent the most hours in? I think I think I told about this, talked about this on uh, someone's stream. What was the stream called? Uh, it might have been my stream, twitch.tv slash Media. Well, I built my first gaming PC the my senior year of high school i built it because i didn't want to get an xbox i already had a playstation and i really wanted to play uh what was it titanfall 
Ah. So I saved up my money, used some graduation funding, got built built the PC out, had everything working, forgot about Titanfall, just played Gmod all day, every day. <laughs> I also built my first gaming PC um, and my first PC, like gaming PC, was mm-hmm. my senior year of high school. Um, I quit uh, doing after school activities because uh, I wanted to play Halo. But a combination of working a bunch of extra hours because I wasn't doing sports anymore at my job and I probably selling my Xbox, that that Halo Reach Xbox. I bought myself a baseline MacBook Air because I was going into college. So I was like, gotta have a MacBook Air. And then I had, I think, 600 bucks left over to buy a gaming PC. And I was like, mom, you're matching the $600 for me to build a PC. And she was like, why? And I was like, just because. That Um, was nice of her. It was. So I had like a thousand bucks, built my first PC. I think it was an i5 and an AMD. I still have the i5 and the and the motherboard right there. That's <laughs> still the guts of my original PC. I'm pointing at it. You can't see it. It's not in the original case, but that's mm. the original fan. That's the original CPU cooler. Those the original red SATA cables I ordered off of Newegg.com. Ooh, uh, and it was an, it was an AMD HD 7750. Does that even resonate with anyone? It was such an old card. Someone it, out there is. It came with a free copy of um, Far Cry 3. Ooh. And I didn't have any other games. I didn't know what Steam was right at the moment. I just wanted a computer so that I could play Minecraft better than it ran on my laptop. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I load on Far Cry 3. I'm not fucking ready for it, right? And mm-hmm. and you And the visuals are crazy. I jump in. And it's this massive, detailed island, and my computer's running it flawlessly, right? 90 FPS when I'm swinging through the vines and shit. And there's yeah. one of the first missions gives you the option to jump onto a hang glider to get to another point just to show off the game, right? You know, all, all games kind of have that moment where you're on top of a building, and it's like, hey, look at what we did sort yeah. of thing, you know? In Breath Assassin's of the Wild, Creed. When, in Breath of the Wild, it's when you fucking get out of the cave, and it's like, oh, man, look at all this, right? You mean you don't glitch out of the cave to save time? I only played like two hours of Breath of the Wild, and then I was like, this isn't for me. Whoa, anymore. that's your PB? Yeah. <laughs> but that game was intense. The water looked real. The titties were bouncy. The cars exploded. I was like, yo, this is the pinnacle. Is the pinnacle of gaming technology. And then I proceeded to play Counter Strike for the next 4,000 hours of my Same. life. <laughs> Same. <laughs> what game do you think you have the most hours in total? It's Counter Strike. It's like, I actually, I think, have. 6k hours that's crazy i think mine is league of legends aram followed by counter-strike yeah just because i i play aram like do you know what aram is not at all it's not a competitive version of the game oh you play with one lane normally mobas have three lanes you play one lane everybody's hero is random and you just go 5v5 and whoever knocks out the other person's nexus wins the game so it's not competitive at all there's no ranks you just hop in and typically you play for fun. I play because I hate playing ranked in that game because people are way fucking better than I am. Um, yeah, yeah. But I throw on a podcast. I throw up an ARAM. I throw some skill shots, big explosions, get some kills. You know, it's a nice little endorphin rush. But I do that so frequently for like two, three hours at a time sometimes when I'm binging through podcasts or waiting for a video to render or something like that. Mm-hmm. I very, I could look it up. I could look it up. Wait, how much time spent on League? That's the first autocorrect. Wasted on league.gg summoner name Aram Assassin North America. How much time have I wasted on League? I'm not going to be happy with this result. For the record, in uh, Counter Strike is my second most played game for sure. And Counter Strike, I'm sitting at 1200 hours. So not even close. League of Legends, I am and- sitting at. Oh, not even that much. 1,900 hours. These are rookie numbers. You need to pump those up. These are rookie. I mean, it's still quite a bit more than Counter-Strike. 80 days of gameplay, by the way. No. But yeah, not 5,000. Holy shit, man. I, I don't play video games very much at all. Yeah. Thought I did. I wish I was better at Counter-Strike with these numbers. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Nobody's good at any video game. It's all a scam. No, we can't all be Shroud. What would you say? Would you say Counter Strike is your favorite video game? Wait, did I ask you what your favorite video game was? You did. I said Sly Cooper. What was yours? Of every genre of every console? 
So oh. removing PC, yes. Just looking at console, I would say mine would be probably a tie between the Sly Cooper franchise and the Ratchet and Clank franchise. So I was a PlayStation uh, boy. I would go between Mario 2 and Fire Red. Ooh, a Fire Emblem game? Oh, no, I'm stupid. A Pokemon game. I'm extra stupid. Yeah. All right, well, that's pro- that's probably the best place for us to stop then. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the podcast, guys. As always, this is available on Spotify. I really should say that at the beginning, but the links are in the description. Feel free to check out us playing on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Media. Feel free to subscribe. Say goodbye, Alex. Bye, Alex. Have a good night, everyone. Spies. Spies.